tweet is out. Fire into the darkness. Hey, Tarl and Compliment Camper first through the door. What ho, friends? Okay, okay. We've got a bit of a big deal going on here today, people. So, do you want to go get yourself a cup of tea now? And I will explain what's going down in just a second. But holy, holy heck and heck, people. Um, Jim, you're set for, for tea, coffee, blood of your enemies? I have just drunk a tea, so I'm now prepared. Uh, compliment Cap gets me right now saying, giddiness is at max. This, this is, yeah, yeah. Uh, I need to find us a, a, a backing track while we chat, right there. Oh yeah, that's the, the other thing that um, uh, I found out was that um, we both, our previous projects have both worked with one Professor Elemental. So that is a that is a commonality that we have, good sir. Oh, nice, nice. How did you, uh, how did you work? Uh, we did a sponsored track for, I think it was going to be a push for Fall of the Samurai. And we did, uh, well, we sponsored uh, This Means War, which I'm very happy about. Oh, nice. Um, and you had he the one. the man. Yeah, you had him for um, So You're Being Hunted. Yeah, that's right. He did the uh, the credits uh, outro track and even a video, which was amazing. The video is super fun. Uh, okay. Oh, I need to I need to pump up your volume, as my good friends are telling me. Just doing a little audio mix on the live. Oh, so Stooge, alleged man, Dorchus, come on in, grab a seat, grab a cup of tea. What ho, friends? Come on in. I have a. I, I'm kind of trying to collect myself at the same time as conversing because we've got ourselves a heck and heck of a special today. Like, holy Toledo's. So, yeah, on the one hand, I'm super excited that I'm going to get to introduce you all to Jim, who I've had the pleasure of hanging out with at previous events. And, you know, you've worked on one or two games, you know, maybe at one or two sites in the past, if I'm, if I'm correct in saying. That is correct, Will. <laughs> Yeah, so um, people may remember me from Rock, Paper, Shotgun, uh, which I founded many, many years ago in the mists of time. Dude, um, you know, it's 10 years ago now. 10 yeah. years. Rock, Paper, so, Shotgun has been over 10 years. My goal is eventually to have all the founding fathers of Rock, Paper, Shotgun on my show. Because I had uh, Kieran on here earlier in the year, which was good fun. Did you now? Good yeah. Kieran, yeah. We did a deep dive into that um, Deus Ex mod he made. <laughs> no way, the Cassandra Project. Hells yeah! Opus, yeah, yeah. Oh, so yes, um, you wonderful folks may know Jim from Rock Paper Shotgun, which he kind of founded. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, it was just a stupid idea in a pub uh, one afternoon and uh, turned out to have some legs, so we, we stuck with it. Yeah, it, it, it kind of kept going for a while. Um, yeah. Now, uh, now, of course, sadly, uh, no longer under my auspices. It's been uh, spun off into the world of uh, corporate control. So yeah, I mean, what, what could you do um, except for scream at them? Please add a night mode because my poor eyes. Well, I kept it black for 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 for, for many years for a reason. And we're but, thankful. Yeah. Oh, and this, I mean, this is one of the things I could get into the weeds about how. You know, heyday rock paper shotgun had so many wonderful things. Like when the site went down, there was a there was a text adventure on the four hundred four page. Yes, yes. I can't even remember whose idea that was now, but it was beautiful. <laughs> oh, that was brilliant! And the the Scotch egg counter, the hive of mind, just little bits. Yeah, I mean that that was largely me just hacking it together in a word temp WordPress template because uh, we had no idea what we were doing. But, um, yeah, I think uh, it, 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 it's, um, it needed to go where it's gone because, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're not kind of big businessmen and we were just, you know, we were just four guys who wanted to write about games and did so, you know, very enthusiastically for a long time. But uh, after 10 years, enthusiasm hits, uh, <laughs> hits the buffers. Yes. We need, uh, we need men in suits and money and, and people who know how computers work. And... Uh, it yeah, once certainly that sort of does help. Um, yeah. So lovely people have just come in. So we've got uh, hideous, 
uh, Chrono, Meowkity, Sakura, Jedi, uh, Alleged Man, I think I said hi to you, but if I didn't, uh, Aaron Feathers and Kestrel, and of course Tal. What ho, friends! Um, proper introductions and stuff will commence in about four or five minutes. So I, I can't state this enough, one and all. If you need to get yourself a beverage, if you need to stretch your legs, pay attention to your pets, your nearest and dearest, do so now. Because we have like, we have a proper, not only a stonkingly good guest, uh, just don't tell Jim I said that, um, but also we have a proper exclusive today. And I am still, I'm trying to contain my excitement so that I'm cohesive. <laughs> You'll be cohesive. Well, don't worry. I'll look after you. <laughs> I'm still surprised you want to hang out with me. Like, um, so Talicus in chat, um, him and I have worked a bunch of events. And um, he was also on the stand when we were showing off um, uh, Stationeers next to you guys at uh, Rezd. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I don't know if I mentioned while we were hanging out, Jim, is that uh, Tal and I are not been forbidden... But they will do everything in their power not to put us together near comic conventions because we're too loud. You're, you are loud, but in, in a good way, and I think that's probably uh, it's uh, it's probably to your credit, uh, especially given your line of work, right? I mean, it helps. Being audible is my one superpower. <laughs> it's a decent superpower to have. Make the most of your uh, make the most of your abilities. I think. Well, I mean. I don't want to get on the feels train too early on today, but that's one of the things that's been making me very happy at the moment is I'm using I'm using my powers to promote people's games and it does feel a little bit like cheating, I'll be honest with you, Jim. Um, it's like It is cheating, but at least it's not evil. You use, you're not using your powers for evil, so <laughs> It's like I don't have to do campaigns, I don't have to worry about like drop dates and press lists and all this. I just get on here and I get to be enthusiastic about games that I care about, and that's what I do at the moment. So, yeah, keep it up. So I'm gonna. So I'm gonna. Right. So Clank, Beadora, Night Valen, what ho, friends? Come on in. Come on in. For serious though, if you need a beverage or something, grab it now, because things are gonna start happening real fast. Real fast. Um, Kestrel's asking, is this game Little Bear safe, or should I take my Twitch upstairs? Uh, Jim, I guess first question, is this um like uh, 80s kids movie emotional scarring levels of kids safe or is this is this fine I mean, for the lies it's uh, there's no there's no like graphic violence you are going to get zapped by things and burned and uh, poisoned uh, it's not it's not it's, it's my, my kid uh, who is eight uh, finds it very creepy basically okay. and he, um, it's probably I mean there are some dead bodies lying around but they're covered in sheets so it's I don't know it's like it's dark but it's not grisly or, or gruesome or, or grotesque or generally gory in any kind of particularly offensive way okay uh, so certainly not by the standards of our era um, right sorry I'm just uh, faffing with a, a myriad of things so yeah, levels of creepy, but uh, Kestrel says, let's take a chance. Um, Jim, this is one of the lovely things about doing this. Um, so Little Bear is Kestrel's youngest. And um, when we did uh, Guns of Icarus, she was officially proclaimed to be our, our pirate queen of our Steam Armada. Good, that, that's quite a title. Yeah. It... <laughs> Oh, so uh, we were talking about it a little in the preamble. Like, um, how you been in the in the in the time since uh, the signal from Tolva? Yeah, so I mean, basically, I took some time off after that because um, it was it was the crunchiest crunch towards the end. There, um, Tolva was just a, such a huge project, you know, yeah. a massive, multi-featured first-person game, uh, just tons going on. And we we uh, we, we hand-built the level, which was sort of four kilometers across. And uh, that took some time. Yeah. Uh, and, and I rotated many, many rocks. And uh, <laughs> became tired after that. So, yeah, we took a, a chunk of time off in the summer. And, um, yeah, I would say, you know, holidays are great. They're really great. Everyone should have one. Um, and uh, so we went and did that. And then, um, then we just started prototyping. And uh, light is is is, is um, unusual in a way for us because usually we just have this kind of idea yeah. and then just get on and make it and and, and you know like so being hunted it was sort of had an idea threw it up on Kickstarter 
it did got a bit the good. money, <laughs> made it. It did a bit and, all right. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's half a million copies gone now, so it's... Oh, uh, dude, congrats! It's big. Um, and then, uh, so you know, same, much the same with Tolbo, where we just sat down and said, right, robots, doing the stuff, beautiful Ian McHugh art. Um, but no, with Light, uh, weirdly enough, we started off just leaving our normal pastures and, and um, we actually we actually worked on a factory style game for a while. Um, and I, I said to Tom, this is so boring. I can't work <laughs> on this for a year or two years. And uh, he agreed. So we just went back to our um, pastures of, of running around in, in environments that we love. And um, yeah, so Tom had actually, one of the things that he spends a lot of time doing um, is just sort of tinkering uh, in, in, in the background with, with all kinds of stuff, particularly uh, sort of procedural generation, all kinds of first person stuff. And he um, he created uh, like a really spooky, uh, like sort of I guess it's like like a kind of sort of nightmarish laboratory, oh. uh, with sort of things floating around and um, and so we just sort of riffed off that and just started building and then we built a thing that could generate a road that ran through a spooky landscape and and so instead of like having a vision and then building it from the ground up as we did yeah. Um, Oh, on the previous games, this was very much like a, let's just tinker and see what it becomes. Um, so it was very much a sort of prototype uh, make stuff thing. And that's kind of changed the way we've worked completely. Like we actually prototype stuff now <laughs> and, and just see where it can go. God, you're um, growing and up. That's, that's, how, that's, how, uh, that's how life has happened. Oh. Um, I think as a, as a consequence, it's just, it's, it's one of those things where we had some ideas for it, but it's just naturally grown itself. Like each kind of little thing has a kind of, wouldn't it be cool if, and then that leads into something else. And uh, cool. that's worked brilliantly. I'll tell you what, before we get more into the weeds about like what and how, ladies, gentlemen, and individuals of all persuasions, we have been sincerely blessed today. Not only have we got Jim on the show today, uh, Jim, one of the founders of Rock Paper Shotgun and part of the team who created So You're Being Hunted and The Signal from Tolva. He has also brought a very early build of his latest game, The Light Will Keep Us Safe. This game has not been streamed anywhere else in the world. This is for us today. So if you understand Will's slightly jittery hyperactivity whilst trying to contain the keen. So, We've got Jim on to chat about making the game. We've got Jim on to chat about the, the old days. So questions are legit. We're going to play through the demo a couple times and uh, I could be more excited. However, I know you all know this, but the caveat needs to be said. This is an exceedingly early build. Things may break. Things may invert inside out. Uh, I might get blinked into several other dimensions of reality. These are things that could happen. These are not um, conducive to the final product. You'll know early builds break. This thing, these will happen. But I'm just, dude. I'm trying so hard not to fall over my words. My excitement is real, very real, very real. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, so you lovely folks, if you have any questions for myself or Jim, uh, if you want to at Viking Blonde and I'll ask them. Uh, I do apologise if I am, yeah, less than cohesive because yo, yo. Um, oh, well, here's a good one. I mean, Mr. Ghost asking, so, you know, what is the... Jim, what is the elevator pitch for the light will keep us safe? The elevator pitch is uh, horrible machines that will kill you unless you figure out ways to use light to defeat them. Done. Love it. Um, so, I don't know if I want to chat about the light before we've had our hands on with it. So, I think what I want to do, if it's alright with your good self, Jim, is just jump into a first kind of run, carry that forward, and then that'll give everybody some nice framing and some nice questions, and then when we do further runs, if there's things you want to point out and things you want to get into, we can. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I would I would say at this point, you know, the, we are testing this out on you, Will, so uh, tutorial stuff will be wonky and, and missing entirely, so, you know, if, if you, you need to ask any questions yourself about what's going on, then... 
Let's I, just do that. And, I uh, will and, do. And stumble our way through it. And yeah, as you said, it's early access, man. So, you know, anything could happen. Yeah. Um, as I said, might get inverted, might get, you know, blinked between dimensions, like some kind of weird Stranger Things type thing. Um, just adding it up. Uh, we'll be ready to show you all in just a second. Uh, that keeps us safe. Come on. Come on. Yay! Alright, give me a second to just resize this. And we are ready to roll. The light will keep us safe today. It is working 5x5 five five with my streaming stuff. Okay. Uh, sorry about this, Jim. No, no, it's all good. I think that's good. Okay. Um, so Caffeine's asking a really interesting question to get started, um, which was, how did you find the transition from the journalism side to going like in-house game dev? So it was, it was, uh, it was a kind of accident, <laughs> basically, um, in that. Uh, so basically, I'd been mucking around with some stuff with with some friends who became the guys that uh, created So You Being Hunted, and. Um, one day I was talking to this lady, uh, Alice Taylor, who's a fantastic person, and she was the e editor of something or other at uh, Channel 4, a TV station in the UK. And uh, they were trying to make games, and they said, do you, you don't have to make games, do you? And I went, no. And they went, do you want to have a go? And so I said, yes. And then we, we created this kid's game called Fallen City. And uh, I, don't, I don't think you could even find it anymore. Like, it was on one of their websites, sort of downloadable thing. It's very cute. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, yeah, that's all just all, all just sort of happened by accident, really. And then we had a little bit of money left over, and we'd all been working together for a while. And uh, Unity, you know, we discovered that Unity was this kind of reasonably accessible tool for making games. Yeah. And so we put together this idea. And, you know, the accident two was Kickstarter being massive for games. Like, I don't know if you can remember back in the midst of time, like 2012. Oh, yeah, that heyday, that like that halcyon summer where Kickstarter was just a wonderful source of funding for It was great just on creative. fire. It was crazy. Like, everything was, was going up. So we just thought, well, we've had this cool game idea with uh, gentlemen robots in their tweeds. Let's, let's do it. And so we did it. And uh, yeah, just uh, amazing. Amazingly, it took off. And um, I've sort of just been dragged along in it. You know, obviously, I have no skill or talent in game development whatsoever but you know <laughs> I'm, I'm sticking with it and uh I've, I've learned absolutely enormous amounts um and it's uh it's been you know like i feel like years of talking to developers and stuff had not prepared me even though i imagined it would for how much work making a game actually is um but it's been awesome to, to do it anyway. And uh, yeah, it, I, I, I don't recommend it either being a game <laughs> journalist or a developer to anyone. It's ridiculous. Uh, no one should attempt it for any reason. Um, but do not those, try this at home. Those reckless fools who do uh, <laughs> will find themselves uh, enjoying it, I think. Oh. All right, so just quickly uh, to, uh, to Tacky Shkit and uh, Drastic. Or Darktastic, uh, or Darktastic, one of the above. Uh, thank you both kindly for the follow. They are sincerely appreciated. Right, without further ado, ladies, gentlemen, and individuals of all persuasions, it is with great honour that I present to you the light keeps us safe. Confirm you are starting a new game. Oh yeah, I just because I tested it out before we commit. Okay, we are in the bunker. Oh. message. This is the bunker. You have been hiding down here from machines, but it is time to end. Hit F to interact and R to cycle weapons. Alright, yeah, this is going to be a wasad adventure. Oh, let me just unplug that. There we go. There we go. It's colliding. It will automatically pick up the gamepad if you want to use a gamepad. That's okay. Oh, okay. F to interact. Oh, I got a bottle. Okay. Message. Perhaps one day someone will read these notes, but I fear there is no one left to read anything. I might 
uh, I might be the final bit of stardust to known beauty. That, that feels like the kind of stuff I would uh, I would lapse into being stuck in a bunker for a while. Okay. I believe that is actually the only interactable left in the game at the minute because we disabled them all <laughs> last week. <laughs> all right. Let us begin. Just uh, do as do as Valve would have us and follow the light, because the light keeps us safe. Yeah, that's you right. Are lucky. Fingers crossed. In a way, you got to hide down there for so long, but now you have to deal with it all alone. I'm sorry, but you do. Okay, feckin' wit. <laughs> Also, who is that? Who is that individual doing the voice there? Because that's awesome. That is the amazing Louise Stewart, who is a Scottish actress. Um, she... if, if you follow Scottish comedy, uh, then you will have seen her on Burniston, and uh, I'm sure she's in loads of other stuff too. But I, that's the thing I've watched. But, oh uh, no, actually, um, she was the voice of was... one of the characters in um, Oh uh, Bedlam, right? Oh, I don't know, but yes, almost certainly. But, um, Consylvania, so Rab Florence's <laughs> uh, mad, mad thing. Yeah. Um, he also did an awesome horror film called The House of Him. Um, I still haven't she, seen it. She Just... stars in that, and she's absolutely amazing. Yeah, then it is the same, because Rob's in, uh, Rob's also does voice work for Bedlam, and I, Bedlam was one of, the, one of those games that was a real treat to, to stream for peeps, because... Uh, it's just such a dance through so many different genres and time periods. Um, also, to you lovely folks in chat, if you haven't looked up Consylvania, go back and find the classic uh, episodes because they were feckin' revolutionary at the time. Yeah, Consylvania is, is, is the masterpiece of, of that kind of irreverent uh, games TV stuff. I don't think anyone has quite matched that stuff. It's amazing, absolutely yeah. amazing. Um, oh, here we go. Actually, you know what? Uh, I just need to. I just need to quickly uh, add one more thing to the 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 post apocalypse, which I should have done because I'm a stupid. Uh, and then we are we are ready to dive on in. Okay. Let us begin. I feel I should turn my light off. There we go. Okay. As in, I feel like I should turn the light off in here in the room, but yeah. Uh, so do you yeah, love this? This is definitely this is definitely one of those kind of like play it alone on a dark night kind of game, and it looks like to me you're playing on a sunny afternoon somewhere lovely. All right. No, you know what? <laughs> Chatting you know, cheerfully with the uh, with your chums. You know what, Jim? You're right, and you know, much like you know, a fine wine must be paired with the right cheese, or a fine cheese must be. Um, wine's involved somewhere. I didn't think this analogy through. We're going to do very this. Poor. <laughs> very poor. Very <laughs> poor. We're going to do but this I get right. It, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, bear with me just a second. For those of you that have just joined us, uh, we have the we have the stream exclusive of the light will keep us safe. The next title from Big Robot, the creators of So You're Being Hunted and the Signal from Tolva. Jim has kindly jumped onto Discord to answer questions. Um, oh. Oh. Actually, no. Dorchus, I'm not going to turn on the donations raw because I, I don't want to... Uh, I don't want to subvert the game, but that's a very good idea. Uh, Jim, for one of the playthroughs we did of Subnautica, we put a system in place where if anyone donated anything... It would cause me to. It would let off a monstrous roar in my ear. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and Kestrel's asking, "What kind of cheese goes with spleen?" When well, no, the spleen goes in the cheese. God, I don't have to explain everything to you people. All right, so Jim, I'll just be a second. I'm gonna turn the lights off. We're doing this. Turn the lights off. Yes. Good. Turn the lights down low. Yeah. Do it. For maximum spook. I could say anything now, completely unedited. All right, here we go. I need more. Uh, now. Uh, 
fuck, I'm tangled my bloody headphones. This is... Like, this is... This is proper shakes, people. This is proper shakes. I don't mean from fear, I mean from excitement. Okay, alright, I'm ready to continue, Jim. So, you're gonna see everything a few seconds after I you hear me scream on Discord, so... Oh, okay. So, let's begin. Ooh, purple. Ooh. Okay, so Jim, I've got a counter suggestion for, um, you know, just a direction you could take this game in. How about uh -huh. I just go back into the bunker and spend the rest of the game in there and live a happy, natural life? You can try. <laughs> I don't, know how, I don't know what it would do for your ratings, but, you know. Yeah, the light will keep us safe, and it did, the game. Um, the, 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 beer, the beer bottle in hand is making me think like I just went on a mad bender. Went out in the lash, woke yeah, up in the we've, bunker. We've, uh, we've <laughs> that's been a sort of ongoing, you know, he's always got a bottle in his hand, this character, you know. It's sort of, yeah. He got so drunk and woke up and the entire world had been destroyed. Oh... Um, so, what was that? So, Colin McCap saying, uh, did you always have that Mike Myers mask on the wall? Fuck it! God damn it! How did I fall for that? Uh, oh, and DJ Alternative was asking, Jim, can you see the chat? I can see the chat, yep. Okay. So, if you have any questions for Jim directly, and I don't get a chance to ask them because, you know, horrifying, you know, mechanical creatures in the dark, um, Jim, please feel free to jump on anything you want to you wanna chat on. Will do. Uh, okay, here we go. Purple flame! Purple flame! <laughs> oh, yeah, Pretty much all interactions are hold F. Uh, this next room is dangerous. It'll be more dangerous when we're done... Uh, when we've done the stealth and distraction tutorial. <laughs> For now, please dodge the tripwires. Hold unbound to crouch. Uh, I oh think dear. I think we might have uh, left uh, crouch toggle. Oh no, it's working. Yeah, it's, it's working. Got ourselves a couple of a couple of corpse friends. Oh, that one's got a comfy bed. It does. You're running out of food if you haven't run out already. You're going to have to go outside. You should have gone into the light like the rest of us. Tense moment for Will. Can he limbo under the laser? Yes. Yeah. Dun, 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 Although, I get this weird paranoia when it comes to, like, sections like that in games. Because as a person with a ponytail, like, if I duck my head down, the little bob bit sticks up. And for some reason in games, I always find myself, like, leaning my head back just to make sure. Like the stealth version of, um, you know, leaning into corners when playing a racing game. Yeah, that's some weird bodily uh, dissonant stuff. You should always wear a hat to protect you from that. Yeah, but I don't look good in hats. Oh, oh, look That'll at be something useful around, of course. I think we left a few things behind. It's like getting caught on a slight slope. Oh no, I was going to start a joke about um, how amazing these um, you know, plastic wrapped boxes are and um, invite everyone to join in my new uh, three and a half hour stream uh, reviewing boxes with Jim, where Will doesn't go anywhere near the scary shit and stays in this room and reviews boxes. We've got some good boxes. Some, there's some good boxes. Um, I occasionally go back to that Tumblr, which is like a uh, uh, bump, was it crates in video games? Yeah, the old time to crate metric. <laughs> Well, see, I did a stint in uh, QA, so uh, TTP was ours. So. Yeah, we're pretty fast on the crates. Although, uh, arguably, ours are boxes rather than crates. There's no actual crates, you know. Message. Uh, you have the modular flashlight. You will need it. Charge the flashlight at the device at the right. The upgrader is on the left. You'll be able to use that device for a bunch of things. But it looks like it needs work. 
So, yeah, the first of our uh, interactable things. Okay. That was creepy. Okay. Handy. Wait, what? Ah, okay. Note to self, don't chuck bottles everywhere. Uh, message. Some bunker exits are blocked in ways which require different kinds of light to pass. Return to this workstation when you have enough components to upgrade. Okay. Wah, wah. Next upgrade requires 60 components. You have zero. Wow. Get fit! Uh, uh, Jim, I should say, occasionally when stressed, I do lapse into a really, really bad Glaswegian accent. I don't know why I do this. I, I, haven't, I haven't worked it out. But this is a thing that happens. Oh. I'm looking forward to that. Message. There are several exits and a strange dead machine ahead. Your task is to go outside. Find what you need. Come back to the bunker. Good luck. Oh. Let's do this. We knew something was wrong. Something wrong with the machines. But at first we couldn't see them. By the time we figured this stuff Spooky out, room, Will. What do you make it of it? too late. We had to go into the light. Oh. It's got some serious light. Wait, are those moving or... They're just glowing. Oh, robo mushrooms. Okay, we're going to avoid the robo mushrooms. That's cool. That's cool. So Tarlikas is asking uh, why the hold Fs. Is that to increase tension? And partly, yeah, but also just I really like interactions that aren't just like hitting a button. I think you need that kind of like the definite positivity of, yes, I'm holding this button down. I want to do this. I think that just works nicely as a kind of like design interface thing. Uh, oh, I appear to have like a, a stamina bar. Um, how how do I feed myself? F1 is feed myself. Okay. Cool. Seems. But you don't have a lot of food, I have to say. I'll work on that. Yeah, you can hold uh, you can hold shift to run, and you're you're pretty safe to run at this point. Okay. Oh, feck! <sighs> so I would like to thank Isocrid for donating two dollars, saying, wait, are we using the spooky donation sound? No! Even though that Beckham worked. Okay. Strange red orb. What is your deal? Yeah, the red orb is for later. It's, um, it's one of our many light-sensitive devices. I ah. keep exploring. I mean, the great thing about stuff like that is that you can do some nice, nice, clean, clear color theory without it becoming cartoonish, which is rad. Okay, see, everything's going fine. Everything's going fine. Wait, no, I take that back. Just. It's fine. Everything's fine. Oh, that upgrade sound. Bunch of angry Roombas over there. I'm sure they are fine, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give them a nice wide berth. Cool. Yeah, you're gonna have to get past the Roombas at some point. That is a problem for future Will. Uh, also, Stooge, you didn't manage to get a jump out of me on that one, but thank you kindly uh, with a ten dollar donation, saying we really should be using the spooky donation sound. I know, but I didn't want to undermine this by putting in a bunch of monster rules whilst we were trying to make stuff happen. Oh, oh! So, Legend Man says, uh, "Are you going to put Easter eggs in the game to save being hunted?" The answer is yes. There, there, there is one already. I think. Uh, we also have the best Easter egg I've ever seen uh, coming up in an update soon. Oh, uh, can you give us a, a cheeky hint on that one? 
Oh no, it's too it's too big, Will. It's too big to okay. to, eat, to spoil in any way. I know. So this is the thing you've give you give me an exclusive today, and I'm getting greedy. I'm, I'm getting, oh, I'm getting I'm slightly unsettled as well. All right, so we did that. Idea says, "Is that a new font to the flashlight display?" And uh, it is, yes, because uh, there's two types of technology in our game world: one that's been left behind by humans, and one that has been created by machines. And uh, Tom stupidly put the machine font onto the flashlight, uh, which was erroneous within the game fiction. So I fixed it. Our ladders. Our ladders have one of our best bugs, uh, which is that you can be fired into space from a ladder. Oh, nice. Okay. So the Roombas... The Roombas get shut down with direct light. Let's see how long this lasts before we get stuck in. Uh, also, to um, I want to say, Anon and other peeps that have come on in, we are playing first get well first stream of the light will keep us safe this game is already awesome and i'm trying not to freak out but i'm having a great time i'm also joined by uh one of the developers uh jim who is answering your questions and uh keeping me from becoming... shine a light on those things it'll keep them right, well, you can do it back in roombas Ah! Eat ghost busting light! Yeah! Now be careful on this last one because he's hiding behind a table. Oh, feck! Oh, that made me jump! God darn it! I was not expecting that. Alright, so this is the first of the doors exiting to the outside world. Okay, okay. Whew. So the bunker there was is, it was hand-built by uh, myself and Ollie. And, Way um, cool! The external world is uh, is randomized. So although you get a kind of roughly similar structure yeah. um, as, as you run through, there's always a road running from, from the sort of start to the the uh, points of interest. Uh, all of, uh, well, sort of each generation is different, so... The, cool. the, the level the level you're seeing now no one has ever seen before that's heckin cool now was that something that came back from uh the difference between tolva and sir because sir had sort of uh had had generated environments and tolva was a handcrafted map was was the choice to do a bit of both something that evolved from those or was that just what fit the project I know he's definitely definitely doing both. I think um, I think the thing everyone has learned from from proc gen stuff is that you can't lean entirely on it being procedurally generated. You've got to have a mix of hand built stuff and uh, proc gen stuff. And the way you blend it together and the way you mix those elements is, uh, is is critical to making it work. And it makes it much much more powerful if you can do something um, where you kind of capture the strength of both of those things. Um, and, and you know, uh, Progen is super great at um, producing lovely organic stuff like I don't know forests or you know grasslands scattered with rocks and things like that. You know, we, we can we can do that till the cows come home. The uh, but something more structural, um, yeah, like you know the internal world, you know, of a, of a bunker. You want to do that by hand. You want to recraft really it. Hells yes. Um, we might have had a first soft lock. Because um, I can hear the Roombas still moving about and kicking off, but we haven't loaded into the game world external. Um, oh, wait, this, this bug, man. I hope Dan's watching this stream. I think he is. Because <laughs> this is a bug that we killed, like, God knows how long ago now. Two months ago. No worry. Um, I should. I'll just boot it back up again and either load from last save or um, I can. I, now I know what's coming, I can dash through that early section. Uh, as I said to everybody, this is exceedingly an exceedingly early build. Um, which, you know, these things will always have problems, there will always be challenges, so... Yeah. Uh, although... Why has it done... Why has that done that? Jim, why has that done that? 
Uh, I think I think uh, you must just have a terrible computer. That, that's that's the only answer. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, that's that's a bad one. I don't know. I have to apologise for that. Oh no, the bugs happen, yo. I meant more. Um, uh, okay, so can I load game? Current game, load. Let's see if we can get through that one. So let us continue. Okie dokie. Uh, so we've got that interactables. So now we know what's going to happen. So I'll I'll. I'll move with uh, with greater pace. Um, so you are I'm... lucky in a way. You got to hide down there for so long, but now you have to deal with it all alone. Holy fuck! I'm sorry, but you do. The voice work in this is so good, dude. Um, I had a very clever point and it dropped out of my head as soon as the uh, uh, the VO kicked in. Uh, what was I going to say? I was going to say that... Um, one thing that's been really interesting, and this is only an external opinion, but with both, like, So You're Being Hunted and... Signal. There was a definitely there was a very clear experience that the user gets from both. Now there's nuances to them certainly, but like so you're being hunted, kind of um, quick-witted survival. Even though there's a there's a humorous kind of like English robot flavor to it, it's it's experience of being hunted, of being out about, lost, afraid. You know, that first time you encounter robots, you don't know what they're going to do creates this general this proper sense of survival this surviving the unknown if you will and Tolva's at least as I would see it like Tolva's experience is exploration you know you are being sent to an alien world for alien You're reasons out of food if you haven't run out already yeah um, I mean from, from my point of view I've always life. loved the, the sort of straight up like um, of mystery that games offer. Yeah. Um, How so? And you know, even from sort of eight bit, eight, eight, you know, sort of playing sort of eight bit era stuff, I love that kind of sense that you were exploring something unfamiliar and weird. Yeah. Um, and be the, around, of I don't know, like the, although it's kind of, it, of games are at sort of level of complexity now where you have to have some level of tutorial. Yeah. I still really enjoy sort of. The sort of just feeling your way like through working. something, yeah, because you're not quite sure what, what how it's going to work. Uh, there was an old game on uh, sort of sixteen bit era stuff called Hired Guns, which was like a first person shooter before there were first person shooters. It was in the old Dungeon Keeper sort of block dungeon thing. Okay, um, uh, but, but you had kind of guns you could fire and stuff. I always remember playing that, and there, it didn't. It barely, well, it barely had any something tutorial at all. It barely taught you how to do anything, and there were loads of sort of unknown uh, items in your inventory. And you always them. be picking up weird stuff that did things that you know were sort of um, unexpected. Stuff, I, and um, it was too late. I don't know. Like I, I, I sort we of look back on that, light. and I have a sort of strong feeling that something's been lost there, right? You know, like and even, even like even more recently, like Minecraft. When Minecraft first hit, yeah. and there were no tutorials, and you just had to figure out how to survive the first night because you didn't know and nothing told you, yeah. something has something has been lost there, I think. But that kind of regards to that, that feeds into sort of a general love of mystery and kind of just not knowing what this stuff is going to do. And I, you know, I, I, the, one of the things that we tried to do um, as much as possible. With, with this is yeah. to create lots of interactions for the lights so you have to just explore, you have to figure out what, what does things. what and how um, all that said the greater mystery might be like why, why on earth this, uh, this seam load transition failed if this doesn't work there's a chance that this build is just knackered somehow um, so we may have to uh we may have to investigate and find out why. And unfortunately, we'll, that will mean that we're trapped inside the bunker forever. So your wish will become true, and you'll never have to face the, uh, <laughs> the monsters outside. But we shall see. This is this is extremely there we go. There we go. Frustrating. I'm not sure why it would have failed. Um, 
Dan's got some ideas. In fact, we're going to get you to send us your log after this so we can do a bit of uh, detective work on the old uh, output. Sounds good, but that doesn't matter for the moment because we are out in the overworld. Holy crap, this is gorgeous! Holy crud in a handbag. Someone was saying in chat earlier that Ollie's art is top notch and they are 1 million percent correct. Like, yeah, yeah, he's pretty good. Ah. Although, uh, I believe, I believe, uh, well, I believe Hideous in chat there is, is also one of our 3D artists, and ah. uh, mu much of the flavor of, of this world is down to him. That's that's super cool, and yeah, it's building building an experience just through the environment while it's one of those things we take for granted a lot in games it is by no means an easy task and i i, I yeah we'll, we'll keep going we'll keep getting into the nuts and bolts of this uh if, if i feel like i'm tripping over words it's because i'm having a lot of fun with this um okay so f ruined this place look there's nothing left. I don't know. Has anyone been to <laughs> anyone been to Glasgow before? I've got to go for a while. I'll be back. It definitely has a very strong sir vibe to it. This game. It's got it's got a yep. lot of the same kind of influences. We've returned to some of the stuff, but also removed stuff as well. It's not. It's it's definitely sort of. Uh, spiritually connected, but yeah, it's very much its own game. So as you're searching the world, hitting F allows you to just quickly scan for things that you might want to go and check out. Uh, oh, is that a... There we go. Not close enough to get them. Uh, there are also a lot of compliments in this about how the... Uh, Feck, a feck. That looks like Nick LG is here as well. He um, he designed one of our bosses, which we will... Uh, there are the bosses? Way. Well, not bosses. Like, not in the traditional sense of boss, but certainly the most dangerous and terrifying of our enemies. Hooray! Oh, also, I've already got to hand it to whoever's uh, done your uh, sound design stuff, because they are... Binny, binny, bin bang. Yeah. Uh, I've got a bottle and some Australian chocolates. Uh, Austrian chocolates, I apologise. Uh, it is permanent night, uh, just answering the question of uh, caffeine1138 there. And also, uh, sort of a point of order, that's not the moon that's broken in the sky, that's the sun. What? Fucking what? Fucking hell. Oh. Also, awesome uh, design Easter egg. That's actually a um, slow motion uh, picture of an egg being shot. That's <laughs> that's on. So your the broken sun is a slow mo egg being shattered. That's right. Yeah. Seems to work. All right. So so far, some of the things we found are mostly dustbins. That's okay. That's okay. You're oh god! Out of the dustbin, well. <laughs> needs must. Needs must. Oh, I do not want to know what happens if we set this big bad word off. So I could give you a little hint at this point. The bottle is a really great way of distracting the turrets, and uh, the little cable that's heading down to the thing. That's a panel you can use to hack them. Oh, now I've got to remember how do I access bottles. There we go. For some reason I've got the... Oh, crap. Ow! Double ow! This was a poor choice! I made poor life choices! Ah! We'll run. Curses! Okay, load last save. We got this. We got this. Oh. 
Oh, okay. The Bleak Road. Now, I have been told that the game is extremely difficult. Um, I'm down for that. Yeah, which I don't accept. But then I have been playing it non-stop for about six months. So what? it might be that my skill level is slightly higher than a complete newbie. We'll, we'll see. That's fair. But um, have you played... The um... Oh. Look. Fucking hell. There's nothing left. Another little bug there that t tips things should have popped up a second time. Okay, quickly making notes here on my little notepad of. Uh, That's of, all uh, good. Failure. I'm glad that we can provide some useful stuff. The thing that I, I just wanted to add was, um, have you played uh, Getting Over It with Bennett Foddy? Yes, of course. Um, his commentary on like the difficulty, like creating difficulty t by your own standards and going from there. That's, I don't know. I think that's very relevant. Uh, I think that creating a game that challenges you as the creator is a good barometer of. Hey, I got food from a dustbin. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I think balancing the challenge for yourself, I think, is an invalid strategy. It's it's one of the things that I find very interesting. Is yes, tutorializing and allowing users to uh, have the tools they need. Uh, you know what, I'm going to make this very clever point, and it's going to be really clever and smart. And when I do finally make it, you'll be like, Will, that's some good That's some good hosting you just did there. Talking about artistic intent in video games and all that. Come on, hack, 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 hack. Uh. Ha! I gotcha! I gotcha. Yeah, there you go. Oh! <gasps> oh, I feel like a legend. Uh, Not impossible after all. Yeah, but letting me have the experience of learning, giving... as a, There is a narrative and there is a core to this, but I like the idea of being told, okay, this is, these are your tools, go survive. Work it out, find the world, see what's, see what's what. I think that's something that's... What you were going back and saying earlier about like the lost art of exploring and, and it being okay to be lost. Like... Yeah, I think it, that's super important, and I think um, I think it's 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 super easy not to do that and get swept up in a tide of, you know, just just got to point the player in the right direction, make sure they don't miss the stuff. Um, yeah. But allowing people to wander and get lost, I think, is uh, is super good. That said, I'm gonna say we'll definitely try and follow the road, even if you don't travel on the road, use it as a kind of guide to the structure of the. Uh, the level. Okay. Um, as I said, we're gonna have a. I mean, there's so much content in this already. We can have a couple of cracks at it. Like when I was chatting to you on Twitter, dude, I thought that this was gonna be like a maybe like a 20 minute demo. Like we just have a bit of a faff around with. Uh, we're already hitting the first hour of this stream, and I am not going anywhere on this. This is so cool. Yeah. This. This. Um. I mean. This. This. There's three levels at the minute, and they they this is a very small sort of just initial taster. This level, um, so there's there's quite a lot to uh, there's quite a lot beyond it, and uh, obviously it, uh, it it ranks up and ramps up pretty hard over time. Sorry, I saw a floating drone bot, and I'm like, hey, that clever thing that I was about to say, yeah, that that, that I'm just going to leave that for the moment. Oh. Yeah, those boys will mess you up. You want to be careful with the, <laughs> uh, the old drones. So one of the things that um, I, I guess uh, it's a bit gauche to ask, but I wanted to ask it anyway. Is have you considered doing any? Um, oh, why would you? Uh, oh. Thank you kindly, Greenfire, for the donation. They five dollar donation saying Monster Roar. Will, are you afraid of the dark? Please have fun exploring the bunker. The radio crackles out. Mwah. The radio crackles out. Bloody hell, green fire. Introducing the world's most sinister roleplay. And thank you for the donation. Sorry, what I was going to say was that um, one of the things that was really interesting with um, Subnautica was that there are a lot of enemies that uh, attack you in ways that aren't necessarily damaging but are surprising. Um, there's a couple of creatures that don't do a lot to you but do deliver a jump scare. But in a survival environment, that was surprisingly impressive. Uh, have you considered doing anything along those lines, or is that something that is going to mess me up in a bit? There, there will be messing you up 
to to come yeah <laughs> but uh yeah the 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 the, I guess the challenges uh, are enemies and the environment itself. Like a lot of what you're going to face are hazards within the world. Um, like uh, my big reference is always uh, Stalker. You know, I absolutely loved that game. Oh, dude, uh, yes, like ancient, ancient now. But you know the 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 anomalies and the kind of like hidden dangers and the sort of weird environmental dangers and stuff. That you know, for me and Tom both, I think massive influence is the kind of thing that um, we just wanted to do, do to do more of. And actually, um, it's one of the things that, uh, that Tom has, I think, enjoyed just being able to build within, within his sort of procedural work. You know, he's been able to layer up these kind of dangers and challenges and hazards throughout the world. And um, so as you encounter them, um, you know, each, each one comes as, as, as a, a surprise. Um, and I, I think... Uh, so it was interesting. We we had a, a like a I may as well say who it is. Actually, it's uh, Raf, the uh, Long Dark lead dev. Uh, amazing game, amazing game. And he he played recently, and um, he was sort of uh, I think he was he was kind of surprised by the structure of the world. He was very much sort of you know he was expecting it to make slightly less sense and be a bit more sort of higgledy piggledy in the way that procedural games often are yeah but i think the um i think the the strength of the way tom approaches stuff is that he approaches it in a very structured way so even though all of this is generated in code yeah it's generated in code with like a really kind of um you know a template that he's put a lot of work into and um the consequence of that is that we're able to build up sort of structures and layers of dangers around stuff. I mean, you'll see this oh, as, nice. as, as you get on. Um, but yeah, there's definitely, it, it isn't sort of that we've just thrown loads of baddies in and some of them will get you and some of them won't. It's that, you know, it, it ramps up and there are things that uh, are layered around other things. And yeah, that whole kind of uh, giving the world some, some, um, some kind of direction and, yeah, that you'll 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 see all that. I think I noticed you a, a moment ago there. You spotted a little green light in the distance. Yeah, yeah that's that's uh, that's definitely pointing the way to something. Oh, can't carry any more food. Nice, delicious. Um, yeah, uh, it was one of the things that was very impressive about So You're Being Hunted was that you're given a very simple challenge with the early enemies, and then as that. Uh, as other enemy types are added, that threat ramps up so well. You know, like you learn how to handle like the basic kind of hunters, but then, oh, then the fun stuff starts coming for you. Um, the scarecrows and uh, stuff like that, things you need to be afraid of because they will tell everything else where the hell you are. Oh god, the feckin' feck. Yeah, we've got some friends of the scarecrow coming in the future. <laughs> oh, yay! Yeah, so ev everything is sensitive to sound, uh, and when you're crawling, you are very quiet. Um, but those guys, uh, you, you're, you know, you, you're reasonably hidden as you are at the moment. So as long as you keep your distance, you know, generally you'll be okay. But uh, of course, if you smash a bottle or if something else spots you, then they'll hear it come running. Oh, oh. Uh, people in chat are like, Will, go make friends with the floaty guys. How about no? Um, ooh, yeah, no talking to the monsters in this one, guys. Yeah, there's, there's no discussion at this point. Um, so, Caffeine was asking, Jim, you said that the road maps the path to the next objective. How do you handle people doing an Elder Scrolls and just fecking off elsewhere? They just can. Uh, it, the, the road isn't, isn't really kind of like trying to push anyone in a specific direction. But you are looking for... Um, a couple of sort of vital resources basically one is you're looking for light itself um and we haven't really talked about how that works yet but uh, it's something to do with that weird machine that was in the middle of the bunker you saw at the start there yeah. the other is uh components for your um for your flashlight now i would be I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, as you came up here, you started to discover some of those. And once you have enough, you can go back to the bunker and, and you start to get a bit more functionality out of that flashlight. And you'll find that uh, some of the lights do 
have uh, interesting side effects, basically. But the game itself, this part of the game is very freeform. You can go anywhere, explore whatever you like, you want to do. Um, and as the as the lights um, allow you to access more stuff, you're going to be able to come back into these levels and, and, and continue to explore and also find stuff that might, might not have been accessible before. Okay. I mean, as I was saying earlier, kind of like the color theory and the lighting is really good. And it doesn't come off as like neon gaudy as well, which I've, I've played titles that use... Ooh, feck a feck. <sighs> uh, I play titles that use color theory. I'm going to pick on Magrunner again because I still feel like Magrunner had a lot of potential and kind of squiffed it. Um, both in its puzzles and in its narrative and how it delivered it, but... Um, Magrunner's color theory, while sound did end, oh, I don't want to go on the roof. Roof is death. Uh, did end up undermining it a lot, because what well, they tried to do uh, horror elements, like the neon color theory of how you solve puzzles, really didn't sit with that. Uh, also, people were asking, uh, is this a proprietary engine, uh, or were the proc gen elements worked into an existing engine? Well, hang on one second. That's all right. You do, you'd. Oh, get in the feckin' house, get in the feckin' house! Ah! Ah, Mr. Skeleton, Mrs. Skeleton, pleasure to meet you, pleasure to meet you. Sorry, so yeah, this is this is Unity with, yeah, with, with all our work uh, built on top of it. Um, we've been working with Unity for nearly ten years now, so, uh, yeah, we ain't building anything from scratch. <laughs> yep. Uh, I think I did a good, uh, I got... Oh, 20 pieces of MacGuffin. Yeah, so that's the, those are the MacGuffin holders, and you're going to need to, to, to get those. As, as, you, as you travel, though, you'll find they are increasingly well protected by the uh, machines. I mean, they're doing a bloody good job at the moment. And then there's whatever that is. That's what we've, we've got to check that out next. Um, also, it, it made my, my tiny sarcastic heart sing that in So You're Being Hunted, you're just looking for MacGuffins. Yeah. Oh. But why not? Uh, I'm and to lovely people in chat, I apologise if I'm not being the most uh, responsive, cohesive, oh, fair and fair, uh, individual. Uh, because I'm like Orbi Orbison out here is ready to wreck my day, and I need to not make that happen. Oh, Alex Wavery says that thing up there is the green herring. The Green Herring would be a great ship name. Whoa. Friend not food, friend not food. Friend not food. Friend not food. Uh. Ah, st stupid. Maybe, maybe uh, oh, no, he's going off now. I was going to suggest that, uh, yeah, I reckon you can sneak away. You'll be all right. You wouldn't lead me into into horrendous death for amusement, would oh, you? No. Would you, Jim? No. no. Oh, of course. Use the distraction device, aka chucking a ball. Ha! Loader. Wow. Turrets do not like bottles. Now here's the problem. I need to distract the turret. but not draw over matey boy McOrbson. At home with the Orbisons. <coughs> Jim, I promise I had so many good questions cooked up I was going to ask you. I mean, like, you know, the, the how there is a... Uh, how your team's games have a continued theme of freeform exploration through... Oh... But yeah, I can talk about that if you want to just uh, not die. That that'd be great. <laughs> I mean, m mostly it's just that uh, I think like our, if if we have a philosophy, it's like um, oh, you can lean. By the way, did you know you can lean? Q and E. There we go. That's what I was after. Oh, oh, that was way too close. Oh, yeah. So if we have a philosophy, I guess it's like, what's over that hill? And then when you get over that hill, you know, 
do you necessarily want to get stuck into what's down there or do you just want to turn away and run off into the woods and just giving people that kind of um giving people that kind of freedom i think um freedom about how they want to approach stuff and you know yeah. i guess um so half-life the half-life games were obviously just so massively important right yeah dude and the you know i can remember for years thinking like you know that that's that's the pinnacle of how this stuff can work but the, the great fault of them i think is like as soon as you stop moving the inertia of the game stops you know you don't that's a good point you're carried along by it because it's this wave of just amazing scripting and brilliant signposting and as long as it keeps going as long as the illusion is there and your momentum is there it's the best thing in the world but if you stop you, as soon as you stop or, you kind of start seeing that you know or if you try to go off track there's nothing there and i think that for, i think for most people that was the kind of the grab what the of, fuck <laughs> What the ever-loving shit was that? I apologise for the swears, but what the fuck? You all heard that, right? I'm not just finally cracking under the stress. God damn it, Jim! What have you given me here? It's alright, buddy. Is it? <laughs> You'll get past it. You're, you're okay. You're alright. And I'm not going to spoil anything on that front. I, I will not comment on events. <laughs> Okay, that's just a turret. But whatever it was sounded really feckin' close. Alright, we're good for food, we're good for bottles. I can heal myself if stuff gets bad. But yeah, just going back to that sort of exploration point. Yeah. Um, that's just what we, we just come back to, is like just that setting a kind of world in motion and then let the player go and, go and try and have to do something in it. And um, I'm seriously enamored and I love that you brought up the Half-Life element because Half-Life did such a wonderful job of dropping you in a setting but yeah as soon as you moved away from the, the set pieces you know the brilliance of it was, was that. Right. Uh, as soon as you moved away from the set pieces like the brilliance was lost. Like City 17 isn't a city that you can explore and the freeform the, the feeling that some of the later Half-Life episodes gives you is something where I'd love to be able to explore more, but I can't. Oh. Right. And also, the uh, you know, it, it isn't necessarily at your pace. You do some, some of it you have to just, you know, you have to, you have to ride the wave. Which is no bad thing, of course. There, you know, there's nothing, there's nothing less than amazing. But yeah, it's, it's not the, um, it's not what we want to do. Right? Uh, also, there's been a lot of comments about how gorgeous the volumetric lighting is in this. And Sorry, you broke up there. Well, I didn't catch that last bit. Uh, volumetric good. lighting is tasty. Oh, no. oh, yeah. It really is. No. No, no, no. No! No! Go away. Go away. Friend, not food. Friend, not food. Friend, not food. Okay, let's just eat some chicken, uh, have a little cheeky heal, and see if we can cheeky round up here, which we can't. Feck. Oh. Um, I will let you into a little secret there, but yeah, if, if you um, if you do the perimeter, there's always a little secret there. Right I don't know what that is, Jim, and it's freaking me the feck out. I don't know what it is, Jim. All right, then. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll find a back entrance. I'll, I'll. Um. So one of the things I found brilliant about Tolva was that you nailed a tone and a pace that is really hard to do. There was like a, there was like an exploratory melancholy with action, like it really felt. Ah, uh, I, I, I struggled to put it into words properly. It wasn't an unpleasant experience, but. While the world had things to do in, it very much felt like, you know, you were visiting a dead planet in Tolva, if you know what I mean. Like, the civilization has come and gone and died, and this is the remnants of. 
what you're trying to say is you put guns in your walking simulator. Is that is that right? <laughs> I'm saying that the the emotions that you evoked from that of are like above and beyond. I'm so lost. Uh, are above and beyond what you would expect from a similar experience. Um, I loved Tolva and I came away from it feeling like this this incredible melancholy, which is difficult to do. It's it's a it's not scaring the player. It's subtle. Oh, though I have a load of coffees, so I might need to take a quick two second break in a second so I go to the loo. <laughs> but um, actually, I have spun myself around the forest whilst trying to make an. Tolva was good. Made me feel things. That's that's the clever point I'm trying to make. Only the fear yeah, is getting we, to me. We did uh, we did crank up the feelings on that one. Uh, oh, did you use the Unity um, Add Feels plugin? Because uh, I hear that's we pretty did awesome. actually. There's a whole bunch of feelings middleware going on now. <laughs> yeah. oh. All right, I could try the other round the fence. Yeah, right. I think I think I gave you the wrong tip there. It's all right. Um, and the, the game, we didn't fall off into oblivion, and uh, the forest was pretty good about turning us back around. So, yeah. Uh, again, I am so sorry, people in chat, if I've missed your comments. You know I love talking to you a lot, because uh, uh, Dorchus is has, sadly has to head out, but wanted to say that this game looks amazing, and we'll definitely be watching the rest of the VOD later. Um, then, <laughs> Aaron was just pointing out that that is an angry little bowl. Oh, um... Uh, Iron Imp was asking, are there many any procedural audio processes running on this, or is it, it is the Foley largely triggered uh, in a scripting type way? I don't know if that's something you can get into. Uh, most, yeah, mostly scripted, yeah. But I mean, there's a lot of sort of live audio going on, um, and there's a bit of um, oh man, I can't remember the name of the term for it now. Uh, what's it called uh, when you block? Uh, line of sight audio or diminish it. I can't think what it's called. Anyway, yes, there is some clever stuff going on there actually. Um, so, you know, the audio source is getting quieter as they, you know, they sort of uh, as you go inside buildings, things like that. So yeah, there's some there's some nice bits and pieces. Load more work that we could do, of course. Um, and we always think that audio is one of the kind of strongest ways to sort of um, like. If some, something can look as good as you like, but if it doesn't have the right kind of audio attached to it, it doesn't sell the thing that it is. Yeah. Um, it doesn't sell the action. It doesn't sell the event. Uh, so you've got to have that in there. And uh, what, I think one of the one of the best things we did um, with uh, with Tolva uh, was to get on board a guy called Mick Manning, who's done a bit of work on this. Actually, he's done uh, some work on uh, Louise's, Louise's audio. And oh, my cool. Uh, he was a king. Um, Jim, I'll be back in just a second. Do, I, do you mind if I leave you with these lovely people in chat to, to answer questions? I'm just going to nip the loo because um, I'm genuinely okay. worried that one of those balls will, is going to get me. And I, I will uh, buy a new chair. I will play the elevator music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you. I'll be back in just a second. Oh, oh, oh bloody hell. This game is too good, Jim. It's too good. Right. Any questions? Any questions from chat? Hit me up while Will is in the loo. Yeah, I'm just trying to Google what that term is for the for the sound obfuscation. What is it? Come on, someone. It is uh, occlusion. That's it. Occlusion. That's what I was looking for. Audio occlusion, um, which is uh, it's one of those things that you don't think about, you know, on the surface. But as soon as you set it up, uh, so so that audio sources become muffled as they pass behind objects and stuff like that, um, it just adds so much. It's like I don't know, in, almost in the same way that you know, adding volumetrics and stuff to the light makes the light feel real uh, yeah occlusion on audio is uh, it does yeah has the same kind of effect I'll say questions okay uh, hmm uh, this is a save that's uh, it, we may get save at will in there uh, we certainly started doing the work on it 
It does save at level though, but it also saves when you pick up. Right. Um, when you pick up your opponents, your MacGuffins. So there's, there's a layer of save stuff uh, going on there. Um, basically. Yeah. And I am back. Uh, thank you again for, for chatting with Jim. It is my pleasure, Will. Uh, okay, let's continue. So I've gone through the crate, uh, the, the crate area rather than going uh, round the around the open, exposed area. Fair. It's a, it's a good plan. But there will be stuff in the maze of crates waiting for you. Um, and... Hang on, let me just take another sip of my coffee whilst I... Because the thing you were saying about, um, you know, exploration, about, you know, giving the player an environment to explore, uh, like, that is something that's carried through on all your titles, and it's, it's very pronounced here. Like... I hate sounding like, you know, first year game journal, but it it feels like the influences of your previous titles have come together to form something that is quite uh, quite unique and has uh, a lot of uh, good pedigree in the uh, genre of finding things and stuff. Well, I think it's, it is like a mature kind of point of development for us. You know, we're, we're, it's, we're, we're in an odd position, actually, because we're all really old, but we haven't been developing that long really like I think we're eight or nine years into this now so we're still relative newbies to people who have been at it you know 20 or 30 years um, but I definitely feel like Sir and Tolva were us learning how to do stuff and this maybe is a bit more kind of just you know actually implementing the stuff that we've learned I don't know Um, so yeah, again, Jim, if you see any cracking questions uh, from chat, feel... if you see any cracking questions from chat, feel free to to answer them to your heart's content. Um, I had a little bit of a 5p, 50p moment there, so that was that was certainly something. Oh. So, just a general question from Asari Greenfire, uh, which is what's my favourite thing in the game. Uh, my favourite thing in the game is most definitely uh, something I probably shouldn't spoil at this point, but later on, there is a very large thing in the sky, um, which will may or may, well, I think you probably won't get to in this stream because it's, a, it's some distance away, but it's uh, the first, people, first time people see it uh, is, is a really fun moment. I do. I thought this was only going to be like a vertical slice. I didn't realise how much content you were giving us to get stuck into. Like, up. long after you've gone to bed, I am going to be jamming on this, dude. Um, just uh, get this up on the. Uh, you need to get this on the Twitch portal so that I can tag the heck out of it. I will do that. Um, sorry. It's me trying to make cohesive points as one of the uh, turrets is like, Oh, hello! You seem to be a fleshy human. Have you tried being electrified by all things? Ah, uh, Duck Britain say, uh, just saying, oh, Hey, what's this game? It looks amazing. Duck Britain. Also, what? Oh, friend, how goes it? We have been extremely, extremely uh, honoured to get the first stream of Big Robot's next title, um, The Light Will Keep Us Safe. This is a... Uh, sci-fi horror survival uh, with open world procedural madness and a whole bunch of uh, scary heckin robots I see what is what what is that thing's deal the only way I can find out is by going towards it anyway I've got to check out that little office anyway so we'll see what's going on there um, oh uh, Jim cheers for dropping the steam link to it um, this is a very, very early build, so there will most likely be bugs, crashes, freezes, etc. But Jim's been super kind to not only come on the show and answer questions, but let us just get absolutely stuck into it. What are you? Sorry, that wasn't a question to you, Jim. I was uh, That was more directed at the turret that I don't yet understand. Oh, got some... Got some meds... 
Do some bottles. I'm, I'm just amazed that crouching actually works on that thing that you just crawled, you just crawled past. I, I, I didn't even realise. Don't tell me that! <laughs> no, it's good. You're, you're, you're uncovering systems I didn't realise we'd actually implemented. Huh, well, that is. Nothing good. Oh, God. Ow! The light does nothing! The light's done nothing! Uh, okay, thankfully. Got some. There we go. Oh. Um, and Jim, I don't know if I spoke to you about this before, but uh, I, I've got to say another thank you for So You Being Hunted, because it was actually one of the um, uh, video series I did on it a while back. That's one of the reasons why a few of these lovely folks know my stupid ginger face. Um, so I've, I've got to say a massive thank you for that title. And even if trying to do that as a video series resulted in me half telling like 8 million game stories and not finishing any of them because something would happen... Which is why I'm it's, very. It's very, definitely the right game for that stuff. It yeah. really is. I've like I've told them like thirty percent of all my games industry stories. Can't see me. You can't see me. Uh, the only thing that I will say about games of this ilk is it gives you an unfair um, representation of how long you can actually do that crouch roadie run for. That's surprisingly. Exp Surprisingly painful. Alright. Yeah, it's like the one thing that would actually kill your stamina uh, in games doesn't actually kill your stamina. Yeah. But I also think we've given you... Uh, I think we've been very, very... Um, very fair with the stamina bar in this one. I don't like usually in, in games you're just this wheezing old man who can run 20 yards and then is out of path. You need a good old sprint on in this. Oh, yeah. And I'm sincerely, sincerely appreciative that I can sprint a whole bunch. Come on, just have a look over here, then go look somewhere else. It'll be great. Hi, my name's Will, and I am terrified of bright red ferns now, apparently. Oh, this was a terrible idea. I've goofed. I've really goofed. <laughs> How am I not horribly dead? A five-part video essay by Will Overguard. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ! Well, oh, you got bottles left? Yeah, I've got bottles. Use them. Um... Can't use the light. Oh, there's more than one turret. This is bad. This is very bad. Yeah, that's see the the empurpled area. That was actually you uh, sorting the door out, so you, you're clear to get inside now. So you can rush past the turret line of fire. Oh. Fucking hell, this game, Jim. It's amazing! <laughs> if I swear at you, I do not mean it personally, but a little bit personally. <laughs> Mate, it's, it's fine. I, I have the worst potty mouth in the entire universe. I was, I was invited on um, a games radio show uh, last month. Yeah. Called... Oh no, I've forgotten what their name is. Uh, it's the one on Resonance. It's called One Life Left. Yes, oh, okay. And uh, the first thing I did was drop the F-bomb 
on live radio. <laughs> oh, I've been challenging myself to swear less when I'm streaming. I'm not. I'm not against to it, and this is. Uh, I have the mature content filter up, uh, the mature content warning up, but. Oh boy. I mean, I, I love swearing, it's great, but uh, yeah, there's, there's a time and a place, and I definitely don't know what the word that is. Oh, the lasers make haunting sounds when you get close to them. Oh. Uh, so, sorry, Greenfire asked, was there a concept that had to be molded to work into the game? Uh, it's involved in something special, um, sort of, because I mean it, it, it's, it's a collision of two things basically. One is that we actually prototyped and just messed around with prototypes that uh, Tom, uh, our tech lead, had uh, been been working on. Yeah. Um, and the other is I'd had a sticker on my, uh, on, on my hanging on my monitor that said the light keeps us safe for about two years um, and I, I just had the idea of uh, you know, lights being oh no I'm oh tumbled. I'm good um, yeah I had the idea that that, that light would uh, you know be the main kind of tool in uh, yeah in a game for ages uh, and actually it wasn't it didn't initially come up with this we, we were working on the kind of like a, a bleak road through terrifying machine infested uh, landscape before we jumped on on the light being the sort of second aspect of it so yeah kind of uh, piecing those two things together has been has been really good it was, it was a real kind of like oh of course those things you know they fit and um, and then making it which has been great okay so we've got enough to craft the first MacGuffin upgrade or as I'm calling it, the McGrupp grade. Um, oh. you just got to get back alive. Yeah, piece of cake, right? And there's no uh, there's no cheeky saves. No saves coming here. I'll have none of that. Oh, feckin' feck. We ran smack bang into Orby Orbison. Oh, Jim. I had, like, so many interesting points and questions to make, and they're just dropping out of my head. This game is awesome. Oh, oh I'm glad it's, uh, I'm glad it's intimidating you in the right way. <laughs> Can that be my can that be my back of the box uh, quote? This game intimidates me in the right way. Yeah, that, I would love that. Oh. Oh yeah, if you ever need any um, uh, if you need any free voice stuff as well, uh, please uh, call on me for for anything that wise. Yeah, cool oh, as I. Cheery Vikings. I'd be happy to help. Um, oh, okay, I'm going to get inside this building. I'm going to have a sip of tea, coffee, and then I'm going to make a, a cool point. And everyone will be like, wow, Will, you made a really cool point. You oh, look, complete... generation ahead. I hope Tom's watching this. Look at that tree, Tom. Is that supposed to be there? Is it? <laughs> look what look what your madness has wrought, Tom. Dear, oh dear. Yeah, you're not getting in there. Okay. Also, uh, I've got. Uh, I'm gonna have a victory hobnob uh, because I can. All right. So, how much can you talk about what your plans are for how you're planning to deliver this? How you're planning to take this to market? Because Sir was a Kickstarter project with kind of content updates post-launch, and Tolva was kind of. Um, I don't want to say one and done, but Tolva was more of a traditional release. Like, you worked your asses off, you released it as as one title. What is your plan with The Light Will Keep Us Safe? Or is that something you can talk about? Yeah, absolutely. So, this is going live on Early Access next month, uh, 11th of October. And, yeah, we're going to, we're going to follow the, early, the uh, sort of traditional Early Access route of 
being super flexible and just developing as we go and seeing how that works. Um, we had this sort of conversation internally actually uh, last week in a sort of, um, you know, how much can you mess around with stuff in early access? And we feel like we could just mess around with anything, right? You know, we're not saying this game is finished, not saying it's done. It's a great big mad scratch pad of uh, stuff that we've developed. We'll see how people like it. Got tons of ideas, obviously, for environments and traps and hazards and uh, just, you know, there's tons and tons of stuff we can throw in there. Um, tons and tons of stuff that uh, we may decide we want to get rid of as, as we go along. Like, I think it's just all up for grabs and we'll just see how people see how, how people react to it, you know. And I feel like that's that's what we did um, with Sir to some extent. Um, yeah. I think, I think with Sir we had... Um, you know, because of the Kickstarter, you know, there was certain stuff that we definitely promised we were going to do, and, and we, we did all of it. Uh, but I think, uh, so we, we're even freer this time to say, actually, you know, we can just go in any direction we want. Um, and, you know, I, we, we've got a little roadmap that we're going we're gonna to push out and talk to people about. Um, there's certainly Quite some cool. stuff that I want to do um, in terms of, I want to make the survival more about sort of psychological and... I think we're calling it uh, the disease and hallucinations update. Is we're, we're planning to come back and have Ooh. a whole bunch of dark ailments and and problems of the mind and insanity and stuff. I don't want to do. I don't want. Don't want to go the crafting kind of collecting kind of route with the survival. I want to make it much more about you versus world and yeah. and the horrors in that world. Um, so that's the stuff I want to be teasing out of it. And we've already we've already got a whole bunch of stuff sort of um, on the back burner. That uh, is going to facilitate that. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty down on, on uh, with where, where we're going on that. I think it's, it's going to be, uh, I think it's going to be pretty cool. That's um, awesome. You know, and I think we learned a bit from Tolva as well. Like I, I feel maybe Tolva lost out a bit not doing the early access thing because I think the earlier you give this to players, um, the faster you get into that kind of feedback cycle of just, you know, what's cool, um, and the, you know. A developer's own wouldn't it be cool if list is always kind of long and complex but as soon as it hits sort of the reality of uh, an audience and their own kind of wouldn't it be cool ifs that just stuff that just that's just it's it's fuel on the fire basically and so i want to get to that you know quickly that's right. um that's a way cool way um i mean i i can't comment on tolva um i can't comment on tolva externally one thing that i found that it did very well is because Tolva was trying to to tell you a story to show you an experience, whereas Sir, and to an extent this, there's a challenge element of it. It's, you know, the world is not your friend, the world is not here to, you know, to gently roll you and wrap you in the warm, cosy blanket of a story. You know, the world in this game is out to get you. And I feel that that kind of like player versus uh, experience works really well but what we've seen in games like we happy few and things like that is that when you're trying to deliver that narrative experience even or if you're trying to deliver a very specific story that doesn't lend itself to early access as well so maybe maybe that was the the right call is keeping tolva as a kind of a as a stand release yeah that, that, that's that's a that's a sound point i think i mean that's another thing that we, that we've got with this is that there's a whole bunch of story stuff that i want to do and we recorded a whole bunch of like stuff that I'm excited to get into the game. Yeah. Uh, with with Louise, and we'll see how that goes. Though I want to keep kind of going. You know, again, I want to keep like open on that. Um, and you know, the, the minute we're planning to basically see how this sort of open and mechanical and systemic side of the game goes before we start nailing down anything that that uh, you know with with regards to how the story is going to unfold. Um, but obviously we've got some ideas, so we'll see how that goes. That's super cool. Um, and also, I love... I'm much more in favour of... Um, uh, things that manipulate and change the experience over kind of like the traditional craft and survive. Um, I didn't get along with Daisy Standalone as well as I did with the original mods, and it's, it's pushed more towards... Like having a, a million different resources to survive by, I don't think was the way I would have I would have taken that. 
but that's just I don't know, maybe maybe I'm just burnt out on, you know, heavy, like, resource collecty crafty games. Yeah, I mean I think it's that was such an uh, such a sort of um well trod route for for survival and you know there's a few people who have done it so well yeah um we looked at that and thought you know there is no point in us trying to do the base building thing or the you know kind of constructing stuff out of you know stuff that i mined route you know that was it was never going to be a thing that we could compete with that alone and really that interested in, in figuring out but we are interested in you know, just throwing a big experience at you and having a big environment that you can go and uh, and throw yourself down. Hell yeah! Um, and so that's what we've done. And things that mess with you and mess with your perceptions are such an interesting way of adding a layer of challenge. Um, we did, it was slightly unrelated, but somewhat. We did a playthrough of um, Soma recently, but we did the uh, the no uh, we did the no danger playthrough. Uh, oh really? That's, that's really interesting. Because I, yeah, I, I played Soma when it first came out. Um, but I've yet to visit, uh, revisit it on that basis. But that, that sounds really cool. Um, and one thing that was really interesting about that is that by removing certain mechanics from it, it actually increased the tension. Like usually in a horror game, you get killed, you die. Oh well, that was bad. But at least uh, not doing a thing with stuff. Oh, we need to go back through here and add our upgrade. Cool. Um, but what we found with Soma's no death mode was that there's no respite, there's no time to there's no time to breathe, there's no time to relax because you don't die and restart. And holy crud! Um, so while we're upgrading, uh, let's jump back into chat. If you lovely people have any questions, as I said, we've got Jim on the line. He is letting us play this. I am probably going to be playing this for the day. So even after Jim scurries off, I'm going to keep going on this one because I'm having a feckin' great time. I mean, I'm mildly terrified, but I'm having a great time. Okay. So if you've got any questions, throw them into chat. Uh, Dan's saying, I think uh, Ollie's worked more magic on this since the this build went up. Way cool. Oh, and the flashlight has been upgraded with a charger beam. Switch to this by pressing X. It is has high energy usage. Look for a previously uh, inaccessible exit. Okay. Oh, cool. I better give this a quick charge. Yeah, I'm super happy with the bunker environment. It's just, uh, it's been, it's been really cool. Yeah. Um, and you know, when we when we were kind of prototyping this, I, I put together like a sort of. Just a really simple bunker out of some stuff, and we thought, "Oh, that looks okay. You know, that, that looks pretty cool. The lighting's moody and stuff." And then you come and see what Ollie does when he kind of does his magic, and yeah, it makes a big difference. Yeah, the right kind of fuel. Okay. Yeah, it's super gorgeous. So yeah, the thing that I was, uh, the point that I was butchering was that I think that there is much more value in ways to mess with the player over you know survival uh, survival by resources versus almost kind of like survival of experience I think I think that's far less uh, a, a path far less traveled I think you've got to you've got to have some idea of what the experience is that you want to kind of get across as well mm. at that point and, and it, you, we um, no, we, we we definitely have a um, we have a horror streak in us a mile wide, so it was it was easy to uh, to reach that. Why did I go down the long dark corridor? I could have gone anywhere else. I could have gone literally anywhere else. Oh, this will be a shortcut later. Okay, cool. Um, it will be a shortcut later. But it's, it's so weird that we're still kind of having, even though there have been some great examples, we're still having the horror conversations in games. Like, it, it's something that gets documented so well, but yet still, still people fail to hit the mark. Um, one of the things that I've wanted to do on this show, Jim, which I haven't had the chance to do yet, is the final level from Thief the Dark Project. Like, Ooh. yeah, arguably one of the... 
how he could be one of the like progenitors of modern horror in video games. Yeah, that's a big boy horror level that is. Yup. Um, I still can't remember who did that amazing write up of it back in the day, but yo. Almost certainly Kieran. <laughs> that, it does sound very Kieran. Although it's surreal now because he is massive in comics. He really is. Uh, okay, and we have now entered the corroded streams. Okay. One, one of my favourite uh, gaming experiences ever was um, when we had the review code for Thief Deadly Shadows back in the day when, when we, were, oh. we were working on PC Gamer. And uh, there's a level in that called The Cradle. Um, and it's absolutely terrifying. And we played that on a great big projector oh. in Kieran's flat with Kieran driving and everyone trying to hide behind the sofa. It was just magic. Yeah, if you lovely folks haven't heard of that level, um, we will do a stream on it at some point. Um, the problem is, of course, having to play through the entirety of the game to get to it. But, yeah. It's... Great game, though. Just beautiful. Okay. So... Because uh, a couple of people have just jumped into chat, so hello, one and all. It is lovely to see you. What, oh, friends? Um, we are playing The Light Will Keep Us Safe. We have been given the literal stream exclusive of this game. No one else has been able to stream this yet. This has just been for us. Jim, one of the creators, uh, one of the, and also one of the founders of Rock Paper Shotgun, is on the line answering questions and hanging out with us. Um, I think. And I, I, I at least hope you're getting some kind of perverse enjoyment of watching this game wreck me several times. So, almost tripwire, almost. Um, I think everyone will. But stay alive, you can do it. I think you only died once so far, is that right? Uh, yes. But I've jumped quite a few times. Okay, so we've got 24 MacGuffin pieces. I didn't actually look to see how much more MacGuffin we needed for the next upgrade. Uh, because I'm a stupid. But there we go. I think you're on 100 for the next one. Okay. Um, so, jumping into chat. So, Mr. Ghost got, uh, is asking uh, a question they've asked a few times uh, for different individuals, but promotion budget, budget versus total percentage of budget. Is that something that you can talk about with us? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a for us, it's a tiny fragment because, you know, we haven't got a lot of money, and making it making it done is the most important part of the job. Mm. Um, we we don't we just don't have as much money to spend this time as we did with Tolva. Um, also, I think uh, we're a little bit wiser now about what we're spending it on. Okay. Um, um, could you give us? Some Ow! So the water is bad. Some water is bad. The uh, the glowy things are bad. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, I apologise. Uh, so you're going to start running into you're going to start running into some sort of uh, quite a few sort of hidden traps and stuff. So uh, just be careful of uh, invisible enemies at this point. Invisible e Oh my god. Okay, so let's get back to your, your question before I freak out something else again. I'm just going to hang out with uh, Corpsey Corpseton here while we uh, talk about that. So you were saying that you learned a lot from uh, from Tolva. Um, what what were some of the lessons um, that you could... What are some of the things that you took from Tolva's marketing? Or its promotions, I should say. Um, I think... Uh... I think but we probably didn't explain necessarily what the appeal was of Tolva in quite the right way. Um, almost because like, I, I didn't want to spoil it for people, but you kind of have to go some length towards, you know, not necessarily spoiling stuff, but, you know, like really sort of selling what what, what this thing is to people and explaining it to them. Yeah. Um, getting that right, uh, I think, has been has been easier this time. Um, yeah, and it's other stuff like just all the little stupid little technical stuff that you know that happens behind the scenes that no one's really aware of, like the best way to set up Steam and the best way to write your yeah. little words on Steam and what tags to use. And it's it's just this you know aggregate of fiddliness and paperwork and things that you know that we just hadn't kind of 
just hadn't kind of clocked at that point. You know, we were we were all over the game and we had done an amazing job in it and I'm super proud of it. But I feel like, you know, yeah, basically doing all the paperwork and doing all that kind of like marketing extraness um, kind of passed us by and you know, we didn't we didn't make as much of it as we should have done. Um, and I'm I'm happier that we're kind of on top of that stuff this time. Um, which is super boring, but it's the absolutely critical part of, of producing a game. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just just yeah, just talking st- stuff up to experience mostly. Um, but yeah, well, that that experience is definitely um, definitely uh, in our favour this time. Oh, so Rainier was asking a slightly unrelated question, but it's it's one that I do like asking developers. Uh, I mean, in twenty eighteen. So Rainy was I was asking what do we feel about a horror game that's meant to be played on Steam uh, sorry on stream where the chat gets to secretly vote on monsters and traps uh, have you considered any Twitch integration stuff I mean I hadn't but then this game is you know a year old at this point and it's uh Dude, this I mean, is I only that, a year in Yeah so I mean there's 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 a huge tranche of stuff that we can drag into it uh, as we go on. Um, so, I mean, as I said earlier, with regards to the whole early access thing, almost anything is possible for this, right? You know, we're, we're just, we're leaving it completely open. Um, we've built a big old scratch pad of, of stuff for people to play with, um, and we shall see. We, we will, uh, yeah, definitely head towards that tower, by the way, Will. Well, the Campo Santo one. Definitely do that, yeah. I see no way then that's going to end badly, but <laughs> let no one say I may... A digital coward. Oh. Um, uh, jumping back into chat. Oh, DX man. Hello, what old friend? Uh, Alex is pointing out that as if the name corroded streams wasn't a hint. I don't know what you could possibly mean. Ding! I did actually name that before that stuff happened. Oh, we cool. Um, that's good. Yeah, you're watching out for those little spiky, uh, the sort of black spikes that are coming up. Basically, those are those are your danger points. Oh. Uh, also, uh, thank you to uh, Corrupt Mind Creations for throwing a follow. As I'm sure you're all sick to the back teeth of me saying, but follows are sincerely appreciated as they do help. Um, these these huge red towers. I'm at the. I don't know if they are. Like ornamental, I don't know if they are a spawn point. I don't know if I should worry or not. Um, they don't actually do anything at the minute, but I have a kind of I have a, an extra systems layer that I want to build on them later. So they're, oh. they're just there to look pretty for the minute, but they will have a function later, hopefully. Back and out, dude! I just jumped through a I just walked through a branch and it it didn't clip or cause any problems, but the branch was like in my face. I basically did that thing in a horror film where someone's like. Uh, oh, oh, no, we're okay. Uh, that thing in a horror film where the branch hits you in the face and the person freaks out. Oh. Turns out this game's a bit good. Who knew? Who knew? Oh, not us. Just gotta climb over that fettered corpse. All right, so we're off to. Go leave Orby Orbiton alone. And go hang out with Campo Santo. Oh. Oh, feckin' god darn it. The Artipo with a $1 donation there saying spooky coin noise. I'm just concentrating very hard. Oh. Oh, uh, Caffeine was asking what are the icons hidden behind the webcam? Let me just quickly adjust my camera. Uh, so that you lot can see, uh, those are my, well, I just affect that, um, I was going to say so that you lot can see where I am, uh, how I'm doing resource wise. So that's food, meds, bottles, components, uh, drugs and light. Yeah. Yeah. And let me just, there we go. That's what I was after. That's what I was after. I do apologise, one and all. Uh, bear with me just a second as I hit a bunch of buttons all at once. So thank you kindly, uh, Artipo, there for... Sorry. 
That's that sounded really contrite. I do apologise. Thank you, Artie Poe, and of course, Green Fire and Stooge, and everybody, because currently your donations are how I am eating and paying my bills. So I am stupidly grateful for that. What the feck is that, Jim? What the feck is that? Uh, just a just a little spider friend. Sp spider friend. I think. I okay, it's fine. It's fine. We're just gonna crouch. We're just gonna crouch. Just gonna crap. Jeez, the lighting in this game is amazing. I know the game's called The Light Will Keep Us Safe, so it shouldn't be shocking that the lighting in this game is amazing. The feck are you? Oh! Ollie's favourite thing is lighting. And like, even over and above uh, all the, th the amazing 3D art he does, it's that the light itself that uh, he's, re he's really excited about so letting him go to town on this was uh, number one that's way cool and plus we are getting to a point where you know on average most people's systems can handle it so yeah i mean th this hey Ding. Da -da 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 -da. uh okay the message a game about characters in their 40s is rare enough to be about despondent, struggling people is a truly special thing. Aww. Shout out to the Santos. Alright. Give me them sweet resources. Aren't they the Valvians now? They are. There's a weird thing. Ah, yes! That was the question that I um, choked on when I saw that feckin' spider. Was, so, Big Robot has operated independently for its last, like, three titles. Are you considering any publishing deals? Are you considering partnering with anybody to bring this to, to market? Yes. Cool. I'm glad we had this talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't really talk about that at the minute, but we have spent the last year talking to quite a lot of different people, uh, and there may be some announcements in that sort of area in the next few months. Very cool. Um, then let's let's... If you don't mind going into the highbrow, this is more for for viewers or for people currently looking at these kinds of, you know, looking at publisher deals and things like that. Why have you decided to go with a publisher for this one, whereas in previous titles you you ran it solo? Um, well, I mean, I should say nothing. Nothing is set at the minute. Nothing. Nothing is concrete yeah. with that. So um, confirming nothing. But why would you like potentially? Oh, I've got to... I think th there's quite a few different possibilities for why anyone would want to go with a publisher. But um, I don't know. Like the the market is super competitive, and there is just a ton of stuff to learn from, from those folks. Oh. So. Um, Sorry, Isocrid was very kind and donated five dollars and made me jump again with Spiderbot is friend. Input hug to friend. Remote connection unavailable. Direct interface required. Oh, I might be able to get the jump on this spider though. I think that spider's asleep. He should be marching around quite quite grumpy. Yeah, he's definitely having a rest that one. Oh I woke him up! Oh that was a bad idea. No, he's definitely having a nap. He only he only wakes up when I put the light on him. So, as we all said, everybody, we have this is the stream exclusive of this game. So there are going to be an inordinate amount of bugs. Um, so I get to look forward to the spider wrecking my day in the future. So that's a thing. Um, yeah, no, I, no idea why he's asleep. I guess. Uh, yeah, just he's he's had a lot. He's had a rough day. He's just gonna chill out. eyeball him. Oh no, I woke him up for real this time. Oh feck. That was a dumb idea. Hey, Jim, do you remember that time where the spider bot wasn't trying to eat my face? Do you remember that? That was a good time. Oh, he, he, is, he is properly awake now, that's good. What will you say good? Feckin' hell, that light's like a... Okay, that is cool as heck. Holy crap. <laughs> Jim, I liked it better when he wasn't working. 
Because he's not too quick on his feet, though. Yeah, you can definitely outrun the spider. You're all good on that count. Okay. He may pursue you for some time, though. All right. So, like a moth to green flame. Let's go. Oh, here's one of those feckin' Roombas. Oh, this dude... i got to say it again. The sound design is phenomenal. Thanks, bud. Yeah, I do like a spooky forest. It's not an advisable shortcut, but... Oh, now, what is this? Uh, glinting fragment moats. Interesting. Yeah, we're gonna keep it. Uh, we're gonna keep it a mystery as to what uh, the light resource is all about. Um, that's gonna be something that's gonna unfold as we do updates and uh, we get more into that kind of stuff. Um, so for now, you'll have to collect and uh, stay in the dark, as it were. <laughs> How long have you been sitting on that joke? It just came to me. <laughs> oh, so we got... I, may, I may use it in every stream I do from now on. <laughs> Done and done. Okay, so those are invisible. I'm sure they're going to wreck my day. Um, but I had a... Actually, I had a kind of a poignant question because this does have a narrative. There is a story. We are trying to do a thing. How do you... How do you manage that when you're planning on doing early access, when you're planning on updating the game as it progresses? Because that's got to be tricky. I think we just... Uh, we leave it as open as possible, right? So that we, we're not nailing anything down. You know, almost everything in there is... Um, is done in a way that I can quickly redo it. You know, like I, I, if we were building something that was very linear and very scripted, it becomes really tough for us to change stuff about, pull things in and out. Um, you know, there's a lot more kind of like designer legwork there, but everything in in this is is sort of ready to uh, be rebuilt and, and restructured. And you know, the and also the the whole story thing is very sort of light touch, kind of a bit of narration from Louise. Um, there was a question early on whether we could have some findable lore. Yes, although actually I've taken a whole bunch of that stuff out because I feel I feel like while it's not um, while it's not complete to any level of depth. Yeah. I don't want to. Uh, I, I don't think it needs to be in there at all at the moment. I want to do like a big lore pass so that people can come back to this and find a lot more stuff in the world and, and start to discover a whole bu bunch of stuff about who the machines are, what they what they do, what they're for, all that kind of all that kind of good stuff. That's right. Um, cool. Because um, we've seen with Dead Cells that that's a really good way of doing it. Uh, Dead Cells left a lot of its um, uh, its narrative and even its um, uh, environmental storytelling stuff until right at launch, which I think is a good way of doing it. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think it's uh, you, you, you sort of you you get to trade in an air of mystery, and also you get some time to kind of like polish and work that stuff out. You know, if you if you charge in there and say, "Hey, it's like this." Um, yeah, I think you uh, you can over egg it. You, you want to uh, you want to wait and see how people react to certain things. Also, I, I like this is definitely true for Tolva, but like leaving stuff not explained, um, in some cases, or only explaining it in a, like a really ambiguous way is way more powerful. Oh, he's chasing me. He is exceedingly chasing me. I can hear him. He is right behind me. Oh god, this is the point where I come out here and the like spider friends are like sup. <laughs> angry, angry robot. Great, I just dragged one of the little hunter killer bots right out to the door. Brilliant, great. Oh, so we're gonna take a moment to chat to Jim some more while I wait for uh, hunter killer McFace stab to uh, not be there. Um. But yeah, I... That kind of light touch stuff... Oh, there's another one. Jim, we just got into a good conversation about environmental storytelling. And now I'm like eyeballs deep in death robots. Damn it. Uh, I'm sure he won't do anything. He looks, he looks friendly. <laughs> you are enjoying this far too much. 
Okay, let's see if we can get rid of him. Yeah. So, we were talking about how uh, you were going for a light touch approach in terms of storytelling for this, or considering it. Confirming confirming or agreeing to nothing, you were considering that, that style of approach. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's it's very much kind of the way that we would like to do stuff is to have lots of discoverable lore. Like, the other thing I think about that stuff is I don't really want to kind of cram people with, you know, stuff to read or mm. cut scenes or anything else. But if it, but if they want to kind of explore and they want to know uh, the, the sort of backstory, then it's there. Um, in fact, we're still working on some of the Tolva backstory stuff. Um, yeah. We're planning on an update. Uh, uh, which even more depth on that stuff. That's awesome. I think I'm sorry I interrupted my... that point actually because I want to go back to that one, uh, but I started screaming um, that you were saying that there's you know the stuff left unsaid in Tolva was very powerful. Um, I apologise for interrupting that thought because I really want to dive into that because Tolva's got a lot that's open to interpretation. And it... I mean, was that something that was planned for? Is that something that just happened? Uh, as you were saying, Tolva is also still being added to. Like, what is, I guess, what is your goal with Tolva and the, the wonderful story it's weaving? I mean, my, my main thing was just I just wanted to spend some time working on the science fiction universe. And I think one of the things that people seem to react best to, and certainly one of the things that I enjoyed most, was that we did a little PDF manual, which was like an RPG source book. Um, that came with the game, so you could uh, you could read loads about the kind of stuff that was referenced in the game um, without us having to explain it in the game for you. So the people who really wanted to dive into the lore, you know, there's tens of thousands of words of, of, of stuff to get into there. Um, and if you wanted to ignore it, that's cool too, because hell, I ignore loads of lore in games. Yeah. Um, but you know, the ones that you get excited about and the worlds that uh, you know you you you're sort of taken in by and you know you want to know more about yeah when you discover there's loads of stuff there and you can get into it that's that's a that's a cool moment that, that tank is way too shiny look at that that's the shiniest object in the universe yeah i'm glad we found it it's um, very shiny and apparently shiny and flammable um so they know this is a bit of a contrite question but i'd still like to put it forward anyway is that do you think that the kind of the YouTube deep dive culture has allowed you to be more vague with your storytelling. Like the fact that if people like it, they will do a four part deep dive onto the potential theories within your law. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think, uh, I mean, I think it's kind of taken us by surprise in some ways. Like, um, go on. There was, uh, there's, there was a, there's one YouTube series, which was a couple of guys who found every piece of written material in, I think actually every single pickup in So You're Being Hunted. Now, when I did that stuff back in the day, yeah, I just assumed, you know, that's that's just some, some flavor, it's just some color, like no one is ever going to sit down and make it their mission to go and find that stuff. And yet these guys did. And, and I think that it was on something like 160 parts or something that series by the time they got everything. Oh, wow. And it just it just blew me away. And that, that sort of level of dedication to uncovering secrets and stuff, I think, is, is just the coolest. So, yeah, absolutely want to facilitate that in the future and, you know, provide as much stuff as that. And, you know, and also, you know, squirreling that stuff away so that when people do explore and they really spend time exploring, they're really rewarded by finding that stuff. That is, that is so, as a developer, that is the funnest, and I want to do as much of that as possible. Way cool. And one of the things that I used to hear a lot back in the day uh, was um, uh, don't design for the 10%, where, you know, going, doing those big, like burying big parts of your narrative in tiny paces that only a handful, 10% of your viewer base will ever experience, used to be seen as a negative, but now that. is that the hell is this ow damn it not cool whatever you are not cool oh, i should have bloody remembered you mentioned um uh, stalker being an influence don't walk into the anomalies <laughs> all right you got enough components to upgrade your torch Head back to the bunker. Oh, I can get around this thing. 
I wonder. No. No. Okay. Still. That was not cool, ball of light. Not cool. Alright, so now which is our way back? She should work this out when I'm up here. Uh... Okay, so it's a terrible game, but um, one I played recently was Metal Gear Survive, which is some really interesting stuff with... Um, oh, like... is that terrible? I, I, I'd heard good stuff about it. <laughs> if you... I mean, the first thing I would say is do not have the English language voice on, because it's so agonizingly, painfully patronizing and illogical that... Ugh. Yeesh. Uh, but the actual surviving and crafting stuff is a lot of fun. I mean, it's using the Foxhound engine, so the the gameplay elements of it are pretty much like prepackaged. Um, but one of the things that was interesting is their whole mechanic is that you have these huge, uh, like toxic uh, dust storms across the map, which you have to traverse. And so the only way sometimes to navigate your way through them is to find these like pillars of light, uh, these like little beacon towers that blink and like guide your way through them, and. I thought that was something that they, that's really cool, and it's something that I'm enjoying here. Like, going up to the top of the tower to see where my bunker entrance is, and then kind of plan my route that way. But I'm doing it visually, not through, like, maps and tutorials and stuff. And I really, I really like that. Um, the one thing I will I, say... Oh, sorry, please go on. No, I think one of, one of the sort of um, things we, we, we spotted really early on, actually, in, in Sir, uh, yeah. was that you need to create as much in the way of kind of um, like uh, landmarks, basically. You, yeah. Players need landmarks to navigate by. And the higher those sit on the horizon, the easier it is for people to sort of take it as a point of reference and then and then get, get through the world. Um, that stuff is super, super useful. Um, and it, it, it was um, things with like... So obviously this is this is a sort of generated level, so stuff is going to be different each time. But making sure that there's sort of high masts with lights on and yeah. um, sort of uh, big structures that you know there's only one of per level, so that they're, so that they're identifiable as, as things that you can take as reference points. Even with even without realizing it, people use that stuff to navigate and find their way around. That's weak. Yeah. Um, the other thing I would say uh, that's worth having a look at. at oh. Damn it. I deserved that. I was being cocky. Um, the other thing that is worth having a look at from uh, Metal Gear Survive is they have this huge, like, titan of a monster that walks across the map, and they nail the scale of... Back! Yeah, I do love a giant monster. Do you mind? Ah! <laughs> Jim, why do you do this to me? Well, I'm nearly at the gate. Can't, can't eat what you can't, you can't see. Right. Can't eat what you can't see. <laughs> yeah. Will one giant floating eyeball. Oh, there's another one! What are these? Fucking trans-dimensional landmines. Oh. What, what are you doing to me, Jim? I just wanted to have a, a nice conversation about, you know, you know, lighting theory and video games, and then suddenly I'm running for my heckin' life. Oh, okay. You've got the MacGuffins, you know, so that's half the battle. Hmm. So as Anon and Peeps showed up, uh, I apologise, I've been very quiet with you lovely folks in chat. This game is so good. So, this is The Light Keeps Us Safe. This is the next game from uh, from Big Robot Studios, the creators of feckin' shit duck. <laughs> they are not the creators of feckin' shit duck. They are the creators of So You're Being Hunted uh, and The Signal from Tolva. Um, and I have Jim on the line who is answering questions 
talking about like mm -hmm. intent and game and putting up with me losing my heckin' mind. <laughs> oh. This uh, has been a pretty informative kind of sit down for me, Will. Like, uh, you, you, and uh, maybe it's not as hard as, as, as I was concerned because you seem to be doing pretty well. You haven't died on this level, which is uh, good news. Interesting. The light discombobulates him. Get away with this! No, that was the wrong button! I'm not dying out here! So, one Mr. Ghost asks, uh, is it set in the same game world as Sony being hunted? Um, what I would say is all our games are set within a linked continuum. So, there is stuff there. Your flashlight's not working, Jim! Because you've run out of uh, juice, I think, is it? Oh, crap! I'm trying! I will run faster. <laughs> I can only run as fast as you let me! <laughs> oh, he's still going. He's still going. Right. Oh, feck a duck. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there's actually three modes. So there's a non... There's a... Oh, okay, so that's not a light mode. That's a light mode. Okay. Oh, that got a bit intense. Oh, another feckin' health pack. Ooh, and here's a mode of light. Sorry, you were saying something... Uh, you were saying something very clever then, and then I started screaming and running. You were saying this is very informative. Um, so what Yeah, I... it's super informative for me, anyway. Uh, what I would say is that so far, Jim, this feels like the earlier sections in Sir. Like I know that the, the orbs will chase me. I know that the um, the Roombas are stationary, and that there are turrets. And I'm kind of oh, where's my exit? Uh, I think it's over there. Yeah. Oh, can probably make it past a few of those, but I don't know if I want to. Um. So, oh, we're back by Campo Santo. Hey. Now I know where we are. Oh, isn't there a giant death spider around here? Of course there is. Um, Should be. Unless he's set off in, in pursuit of you across the level, which he could have done. And I'm okay with that. Alex is telling me to use the road, and I'm going to say, how about... No! Whoa! Um, okay, let me try and find both my, my courage and that point that we were discussing. Yeah, so right now there's nothing... The things that you're talking about, like uh, enemies that discombobulate and that... It's... At this point, I can manage all the threats and I can understand them. At least with the tools I've been given. And I did actually know that I could slow down the orbs by flashing the light in their face. Like, that's something I just learned in that panicked run there. God, this game is pretty. Um, but... Um, I... You know, like the. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good example. And I guess if the spider was working as well, that would be an extra like threat element, like a this you know the unstoppable spider is always coming for you type thing. Yeah, I mean he's he's usually a little bit more aggressive than that. I'm not sure how he was asleep, but. Uh, I mean, I'm I hap did... I'm happy to let him have a little little sleepy sleep because you know he's he's a hard working spider. The... Yeah, part, I mean, part of the randomness of this is that there are, you know, the procedural stuff will throw up times when they just get confused because of the structure of the world and stuff like that. So I expect you wanted to walk into the water and couldn't or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we can certainly uh, certainly work on that. The um, yeah, there are there there's a there's a couple more uh, there's a couple more bad guys yet yet to come. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm definitely kind of interested to see what you make of the, the next light you unlock and the world. Ooh. Uh, up in. Well, I'm, I, I can see where we're headed, and I'm not too far off. So as long as I'm not a complete numpty, we should be we should be on track with that. Um, I 
Okay. Ah, just the ambient like soundscape stuff as well is so good. Yeah, um, we're pretty happy with that. Uh, the same musician again, um, whose uh, all his stuff is on Bandcamp, and all, all all three soundtracks have just been phenomenal. So check those out. It's called Forces of Good on Bandcamp. Ooh, that's a cracking name. Um, okay, so this was the little yeah, so this was the little flaming gate. How the purple flame didn't burn down that log cabin, I'll never know. But you know, I guess they build them sturdy out here. All right. Back into the bunker we go. Oh, actually, I'm going to recharge my recharge my flashlight now. But um, always a good idea. So. I, I guess the thing I was trying to say was, without wanting to sound like the uh, the young kid at the party, it's like, you could absolutely do far more to mess with the player. Like, you know, you, you could go... By this point, you could be throwing in some really decent horror elements, and... Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think the, the player uh, the, would... The, uh, the, uh, the, the, the Invisible Enemies update is definitely going to uh, help with that regard. He... I, sh I don't know why I'm grinning. I'm going to experience this, and it's going to mess me up. So, yay. Oh, so, uh, Joshua. What, ho, friend? How goes it? Welcome. We are playing the feckin' stream exclusive of The Light Keeps Us Safe. Um, I've got Jim on the line. This game's amazing. I mean, it does keep messing me up, but... Okay, message. The flashlight has been upgraded with the revealer beam. Switch to it by pressing X. Uh, this will provide another path out of the bunker if you can find it. Ooh. Uh, and we need 125 for the next one. So we've got flashlight. Oh. All right. Time to go for an explore, one and all. Um. I had a clever point then, Jim, but it dropped right out of my head again. Uh, though this does remind me nicely of... Oh, what was it called? Um, uh, Scanner Sombra. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interesting game. Yeah, I... And I mean no disrespect by this. I feel their, their price point was a little bit too high for what they were putting forward. Um, but it was a really interesting experience. And I'm glad they carried it through. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Uh, Alex Swavely asked, this will show off the invisible guys. No, no invisible guys in this build, I'm afraid. There's still a work in progress. Oh, he means the light. Yes, the light will reveal them. Uh, but not in this build. Aha! That's cool. That is exceedingly cool. Now, I'm, I'm guessing this isn't the case currently, but will I be able to go back through older areas with my newfound powers and use you them to, to find cool things? You will. Uh, I mean, one of the cool things about this uh, is that we can, uh, we can simply throw in um, some new variables and it will generate interesting new levels if you play through again. Um, but yeah, the, the, there's already stuff that was in the last level, I think, anyway, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Uh, that you would have been able to get to with this. Ooh. Uh, so, yeah, the idea, I mean, that we haven't done a whole lot of that kind of crossing over. It's fairly structured so that, you, you know, the, the stuff for, for one light type is in the next level. But as we expand out, you know, obviously that hub you're seeing, yeah, uh, the whole bunch of blocked doors and stuff, all those are going to have. Uh, new worlds off them, and as 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 the game gets a little uh, more compl complex, you're going to have all that stuff uh, meshing together. Okay, so one and all, I would like to introduce you to the Ashen Path. Ooh, Ashen One. What the heck is that? Oh. 
No. Interesting, interesting. What's that over there? Some floodlights. Oh, look at that! Hauntingly massive, like, laser beam to the sky tendril. Isn't that, look, isn't that like, inviting? Okay, Jim, I don't know why I didn't ask this already, because, in, in fact, it has been a massive oversight on my part that I didn't ask you this already. Is there going to be crows in trees, and will they all set each other off? I don't know. We're certainly, ha we're certainly going to have crows uh, in lots of other places. Um, I'm sure we could do crows in trees, yeah, I don't see why not. Because uh, uh, just th there is actually a, a pending crow update. Uh, I haven't quite got around to it yet. Uh, the reason I bring that up, one and all, is that one of the it was a the most hilarious bug back in um, the early times of so you're being hunted, where the crows would set each other off, and it would cause this chain reaction of crows across the map, causing all the enemies chasing you to go completely ballistic. Those were those were some good times. Nice. Yeah, I do like a good crow. Oi. Oh, feck the feck! Oh, I'm having some good chuckles watching this. Try using your charge beam. Try applying that to a turret and see what we get from that. That was very interesting. I don't know if you all saw that. By using the charge beam, I basically just uh, I didn't I don't want to say flipped his out. This was a bad idea, and I immediately regret it. Yeah, it doesn't quite work on turrets yet. <laughs> I will put something in to overcharge them, but I want to make it slightly more complex than just shooting straight at them. Yeah. You need some other layer of uh, you know, related node you've got to overcharge or something like that. Yeah, you do have something bearing down on you now, Will. What the shit? What the ever-loving shit? That thing's not... That thing's a fa... What am I even supposed to do against that, Jim? Oh, Christ in a crab basket. I can't help you there, Will. Uh. It's coming. You'll see that, right? That feckin' hand of... Death coming at me! Oh, feck and feck! What do I even do? Oh, I wonder if that no, doesn't do anything. It's getting yeah, closer. I got, a, I, got a, I got a related plan for those. I think, uh, I mean, the only thing we've done is, is to create a whole bunch of these little systems that I, I'm, I'm going to spend some time uh, hooking up and adding layers of uh, things what can be interacted with so that you can spend some time sort of um, seeing what the knock-on effects of knocking out different systems and things are. Feckin' feck. Jim, you know I can hear the smile in your voice as that fecking sky hand is stalking me. <laughs> yeah, I thought you'd like that. Like is a strong word, Jim! Like, I don't know if it's... it's It feels like it's already got a bead on me. Oh, feckin' hell. Oh, and so when I was saying about how the, the monster in Metal Gear survived, and you're like, oh, yeah, I like big monsters. I thought that thing was feckin' scenery, Jim. 
Yeah, everyone does in the first time. Now, did it... I don't know if you can answer this. Did it start responding because I set off an alarm? Like... Um, yeah, I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna... I'm okay, not gonna that's cool. It's behaviour, so I think. That's entirely cool. I'm, I'm lost. I'm afraid. And... Oh, alright, we might have lost it. Uh. It's just some good lost in the woods action. I'm enjoying this. What the hell is that? Is it purging the ground or something? What the fuck? Although now I know I can do this. Hey, later, champ. Get it, feck. Right, there's supposed to be stuff over there. Back and out. Oh, Drag to Art says, just surrender yourself to the great hand in the sky. No! No! You can't make me! I will admit, there's a certain morbid curiosity as to what that thing will do to me. Holy crap, that thing's terrifying! Caffeine's like, is that a door at the front? Oh, caffeine, if it's not a door, it's a feckin' hatch, isn't it? Feck! Come try my new game, Jim said. It'll be fun, Jim said. What's the worst thing that can happen? Oh. Uh, you found your way to a compound anyway, so uh, well on your journey. I think you mean, well on your journey, eh? Ding, ding. Oh, feckin' hell. <laughs> Joshua's just shouting, Be one with the bog! I'm good. Oh, but that's an idea. Uh, oh, no. It was, I thought it was a good idea. Because now I'm trying to charge beam on everything. Yeah, uh, Tom has a list of uh, make the charge beam do stuff waiting for him when he starts work on Monday. I mean, one of the things that one of the things that was really good with um, Subnautica was the fact that no matter how good you were at the game, there was never a way that you could remove the fear. You can never kill the monster. You're you're never strong enough to do that. And yeah, I mean, we don't want to kill anything in this. And we also didn't want to put a gun in the player's hand or anything like that. Yeah. You know, it's about vulnerability, right? You know, there's going to be moments where you get a reprieve and you get, you know, some tool that can help you. But, um, yeah, uh, stealth games are about, about vulnerability, right? They're about, you know, knowing that you have to run and hide. I think it's getting very closer. I can, I can feel it in my bones. All right, compound time. What the fuck is that? What the shit was that? Cool. No man, but you're you're getting exceedingly low on uh, on charge there. So <laughs> maybe maybe you'll find something to help you up ahead. Maybe. I'll be able to find the impending hand of doom consuming me repeatedly, forever and always. Oh, oh there's an idea though. We haven't been using our our cool uh, invisibeam. beam. Whoa! Okay, that's cool. That's feckin' cool. Oh. 
I've got many balls left? I think I have. Oh. Oh. Like I said, Jim, I can hear the glee. I can hear the glee coming from... I am smiling, Will, I have to admit. Okay. So how do we get through this? Because we saw one of these earlier. Don't forget uh, you're low on energy, and if you have a little turn around there, you'll see uh, Aha. a helpfully placed workbench. Yay! The, the charging sound is incredibly sinister. So we can't go through it like that. The charge beam doesn't crack it. Friend, not food. Friend, not food! Oh. Feckin' hell! These games can be the rat death of me, Jim, I tell thee! I feckin' tell this. Oh. And yeah, the little sound effect as you're charging it is, isn't is comforting at all. It's sinister and mean. <laughs> oh. Okay, so I've now got enough charge I can make that guy not hang out with us for a bit. Wherever it is at. Alright. Let's see if we can make this work. Wait. Ah, so we do need to get up. Past this. Hmm. I can't go through it. What am I missing here? What am I missing with this tube? You want a little clue? I'd love a little clue. Have a little look around the outside of the tower. Getting real close. Yeah, the tower itself, the actual uh, st the stone structure. You look up. This might, this may be uh, an interesting QA test point where this is too hard to find, but there is a little thing I've missed. Okay, that's cool. I'm just, you know, dealing with a few things at the moment. Doom hands f uh, almost found us. Christ. Oh, crap in a handbag. Oh, fucking hell. It's getting a bit tense there, Will. You think? I'm afraid I have managed to find the thing. Yeah, if, you, if you if you look, go round to the left side of the tower and look up um, on the on the outside, you should see a little charge switch that will knock out the. Uh, force field. Yeah, being inside does uh, does keep you safe from that guy. So just, you know, keep, keep cover. Yeah, don't use a real beam. I think that's what's happening. Is you're using the real beam so you're not spotting it. Buddies again. A little bit of a difficulty spike. 
here. I took oh fuck it fuck Caffeine with Go into the light No Just send those bad words off into the You've just got queuing up. So many of them around. So many things got Jim, we are right underneath the death. You really are. Oh. May have to bring that charge point round a bit. I think it's probably a bit uh, a little bit too uh, accessible. I mean, what I'm thinking of doing is making a break for it out of here, luring back um, Handy Sky Henderson. Definitely a good tactic, yeah. Giving me a bit more breathing room so I can come back and explore. Yeah, make a break for the woods is definitely a good thing to do. Yeah, this is this isn't quite in yet because we haven't got uh, refueling generators. Um, my plan is for, for big bats like the uh, uh, our old uh, sky spider yeah. is to um, is to have sort of big spotlights like you know like the old kind of like World War Two spot in plain spotlights to uh, lock them in place. So you can, as long as you can keep the generators running, you can keep them uh, away from the areas you need to get into in the sky. We haven't quite got around to that yet. I mean, I'm so not it's definitely in the pipeline. I, I don't know how you would go about it. I from a from a this game is kicking my ass standpoint. I'm not. Uh, I I am happy with them that thing being just a gigantic force of nature. I'm happy with it being massive and unknowable and unstoppable. Maybe having ways to ow! lure it away in varying capacities might not be terrible, but. Yeah, I, mean, I was thinking about the, the stuff we did in Sir, where you could light the fires on the hills, and that would attract dudes from all around to come check it out. Yep. You know, solutions like that are always really fun. I am definitely down for those. And one of the things that I enjoyed, again, I'm sorry I keep referencing Subnautica, but it's just that uh, the Subnautica's large creatures, they can never be stopped. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can... Yeah, those guys did a great job with, with that sort of stuff. And because once you can manage a creature, then they cease being scary. And uh, the, in some of the late games, you learn how to handle them, and the fear does dissipate. And as it should, like as part of the, the oh feck and feck, oh the great Odo with another lovely donation and just boo. So Odo caffeine, and again Isocrid. If I didn't say thank you for those lovely donations, ah feck and feck. I ain't coming out of this alive. This might be our second death. You know what? If I'm going, I'm going out in style. Alright, you great big sky spider, come at me! I'll fucking do yous! Oh, fucking. Jeez, that made me jump. Oh. Uh, also, I do feel with those big ones. You, you've got to have some really uh, visceral takedowns. Uh, oh, yeah. But again, it's super early, and I also understand that as the person who just comments on this and doesn't have to feckin' make it, it's real easy for me to say this stuff. <laughs> Alright, so once more with feeling. So, hang on. I'm just going to answer some questions. Uh, Lizzie says, uh, having a peaceful stream this afternoon, Will? We are having a great time. Uh, Rainier says, it looks like that part of Dark Souls in the sewer with the gaping dragon near Blighttown. Oh, that thing was horrifying. I don't know if you've, uh, if you've, if you're much of a Dark Soulsian yourself, Jim, but, oh. No, I'm too much of a worse, I'm afraid. Uh, and then, 
Yeah, Tom, our, our, our main tech guy, is uh, our Dark Souls king. All right. He plays enough of it for the rest of us. So we're going to pay it. What the fuck is that? Hang on, let me try the reveal beam. Time to feck about this one. Ow! Ow! Poor. Oh. Well, that was a large amount of health I did not need to lose. And there's that one. Now you were saying that the the thing would look the... up the side of the building there. Yeah. Uh, to the left, I would say. On the outside, it'll be sort of round to the left, I should think. Back. I completely goofed that up. You did a bit. <laughs> that was a bit naff. Oh. Here we go, the Ashen Path. And the thing is, I don't feel that the game is being unfair. Like, I I, I feel it's, it's been easing us quite nicely into the difficulty curve it's bringing. Because it ain't fecking around. Oh, what was that, everybody? Uh, you want to see the gigantic sky thing screaming again? God, oh, great, because that's what we're going to do. Enter ah! <laughs> Numbers saying, where's the donation roar? I tell you what, Jim, when, it, when we find it... get less creepy it does not get less creepy um when you uh, when you finally do have to go i'll definitely i'm going to turn on the donation raw because it's being requested and i am i am not if not uh the absolutely no problem all right right run around to the other side before we do anything else yeah, okay yeah, yeah, keep going around keep going around you and uh you should see it's not working. Look up now. Look up. Look up. Look up. That there? Yeah, it should be. Oh, uh, yeah. It's the other side of the platform than I thought it was, but you should be able to get it. And uh, hit it with a charge beam. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. That's good. Yeah, it's a bit less obvious than I thought it was, but uh, yeah, that should pull down the force field. There's always one of those connected to the force field, so that you have to. Uh, usually, they're just hidden in a window or something. But uh, obviously, Tom squirreled that one away up the tower. Back. Okay, so now we know where the thing is, <laughs> and now I can I can try this proper. I mean, God, good thing there's not a gigantic spider in the sky that's going to eventually, uh, you know, eviscerate me with its lasers. All right, good thing. Because that would be really bad. Oh. So, I mean, we were talking earlier about how, you know, you made the move from, you know, you made the move from Jono to Creator. Um, and we, we joked a little bit about, you know, both being exceedingly hard and don't do it. Um, but what are some of the rewarding parts of, you know, going from Jono side to game dev? Because, I mean, you must like some of it because you've been doing it for eight bloody years. Yeah, I mean, it has, it has been hugely rewarding. I think part, I, I think it's always the kind of, like, thing, you know, on the Jono side where, you know, if you want something to exist, you can make it um, and you know I really want games like we make to exist so being able to actually make them is uh, is, is really something um, and it, yeah it's been sort of massively sort of satisfying to see that sort of stuff 
come to pass. And uh, yeah, like, uh, and it, okay, it sounds super selfish, but man, it's really good to make games that I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> and have you found you've been able to continue playing them? Because with some projects, you work on them and you never want to see them again. You're very happy to create them. But... I think I think with Sir, I think I played a lot more of that uh, than I did with Tolva because we were just so in the trenches with Tolva for the last few months of it. Um, but then, you know, I was able to come back to Tolva when we um, uh, when we did the expansion, and that was just beautiful because it was a, you know, I had a little break. Um, we spent a few months doing some other stuff. And then we sat down and we made this whole kind of uh, expansion campaign. Um, and I just got to enjoy all the stuff we'd made with that little bit of distance. And that was so good. That's super cool. Um, that is super cool. Oh, okay. Oh, we should put the reveal beam on, shouldn't I? I feel like that's the crux of this part. I'm just answering Caffeine's question there. Why, why the weapon's lightning based rather than projectile? Um, because I, didn't, I wanted to do a game that didn't really have any guns in it, whether they were your guns or anyone else's. But we needed that kind of level of jeopardy. Also, I think people have like a real instinctive fear of zappy, crackly, electrical, burny stuff. Um, so it just sort of upped the ante. I almost feel like we're a bit anaesthetized to bullets flying and things going bang, but we're not, definitely not to. Um, just horrible crackling sort of burning emanations and stuff um, and it you know thematically it just works really well with all the uh, with all the machines yeah I I would say we're, we're reaching a point where like you know visually and technologically we can represent you know realistic firearms very very well and I, one of the things and I'm not saying this is bad but like you know, the empowerment fantasy of firearms is a lot of fun, but it's just that. It's it's empowerment. You know, the the concept as it was explained to me is that you know, the the love of the firearm is the idea that um, you go from being the the nobody to the hero because you have acquired this equipment. It it empowers you to do more and be more. Once you give that to a player, there's a certain expectation. Um, Subnautica deciding to give you no firearms of any kind was inspired. Yeah, it's definitely a good move. And also I think it's, um, you know, there's a lot of sort of design questions that are already answered about guns. So it's, it's if you're asking a question uh, when you're making a game, chances are it's already been answered by somebody else. So it's very easy to get to that point. It's actually more interesting as a design challenge to think, well, well, no, what, what are other ways that we can create these sort of interesting interactions and interactions at a distance, all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, and when we were talking about doing a horror game and a sort of light game and stuff, it, obviously a horror game has a flashlight in it. Um, but making that work in different ways and you know creating the reveal structures and all the other stuff we're intending to do. Like the next um, light I want to work on is a dissolve beam Ooh. that will dissolve kind of these um, structures that the that machines have built up around stuff. And um, just kind of creating those systems and implementing them and stuff. That's super satisfying. Ow! Oh, I deserve that. I was being cocky. Yeah, luckily the little lasers don't do too much. Just enough to remind me not to be a stupid. Uh, I'm going to assume that screaming no full damage doesn't work in this. I mean, the full damage isn't, isn't too bad. But I wouldn't jump like it. Oh, why would you make it sound so meaty? <laughs> oh, that was a proper cartilage popper. Oh, that is actually one of my favourite things in the game. I do like a good ankle crunch. Oh, it's so visceral. Oh. Um. All right, everybody, I'm gonna, because we've cleared out this compound to the extent, I've just got to peg it out of here. Uh, I think I've got, yeah, I've got food, got, got some heals. There's no there's no elegant way of doing this, so I'm just gonna run. Oh, oh Jim, thank you for licking that again. So, um, 
to those of you who have just joined us, we are playing The Light Keeps Us Safe. This is the proper, like, Twitch first stream exclusive of this game, like, fucking anywhere. Y'all are getting to see this for the first time on stream. I am playing it, and it's fucking amazing! Um, it is, the build that we're playing is super duper early, um, and it will be rolling into early access. Jim, I think you said next month? Yeah, that's right. October the 11th is uh, early access day. Yeah. Okay, but there is a Steam page up, so if you want to throw on your wish list, if you want to uh, bookmark that Mother Hubbard for when it's ready, no doubt I'll be shouting about this a lot. Oh. Uh, no doubt I will be shouting about this a lot, so... Yeah, if you have any questions for Jim, um, Jim, not only one of the developers of this game and of So You're Being Hunted and The Signal from Tolva, but also one of the original founders of Rock Paper Bloody Shotgun! I added the bloody part, I'll, I'll be honest. Ah, you, these guys just going for the, like, road train. Doot doot. Alright, I've got an idea. Yeah. Oh, almost. La la la, you can't see me! La la la, you can't see me! La la la, you can't- How are there so feckin' many of them? That is actually the most of them. La la la, you all can't see me! There's so many, Jim! That is about twice as many as I've ever seen <laughs> in a single place. <laughs> I think you've outrun them there. Sounds good. <laughs> oh, in the words of caffeine, leg it, you numpty! Oh, uh, yes. So those of you who have just joined us, what hope, friends? Um, I am desperately trying to survive this robot-infested hellscape. It's just a lot less English. It's a little less English. It's actually a bit more Scottish. It's a, a lot more Scottish. Cool. Hopefully, they just give away my position. Um. Oh, fair canal. So I know the question that everyone is going to ask, and I hope I know the answer, but do you have any intent to uh, add any um, multiplayer functionality to this? No, not this time, I'm afraid. Um, we, we did it on Sir, and although it was amazing, it was horribly painful. Um, I think our plan with regards to multiplayer is to not touch it until we do it from the ground up. So. When we do a multiplayer game, it will be multiplayer game out the gate. Um, yeah. It won't be built around or kind of attempted to be building on top of a single player thing. It'll be, uh, it'll be, it'll be multiplayer because it's meant to be, not because uh, we've uh, added co-op through popular demand, uh, which sounds harsh, but you know that stuff is a big commitment, and yeah, we're, we're only a tiny team, so you know we just got to take it on the chin. No, no, it's entirely cool, um, and a lot of our lot here. You know, we have a lot of programmers and a lot of developers in who have nothing but sympathy for that phrase of, oh, just add multiplayer, as if that's how it works. No, that's fine, just uh, just add multiplayer. It's, it's easy, it's really easy, right? Oh. Okay. So these are the landmine, Mother Hubbards. We can, we can reveal them with the light, so that's cool. Feck off and all. Oh, okay. So, uh... Yeah, is the reveal working on them? No. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's not, actually. Yeah, a few of those interactions are a bit chunky at the minute. They need to be sewn up. It's, it's all good. It's like we said, like... Oh. Dude, I just keep taking screenshots of this. Like, you see, like, the burning edge underneath the hand? It looks like the, the world's on fire somewhere else. Yeah, it's, I, I love that thing. Uh, that was uh, Nick LG, or I think he's in the stream, or was 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 in there. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, creation of spider. Uh. Oh. Okay, okay. 
mean, this this one feckin' orb seems determined to be our friend. Oh, Does it not work if we're too close? Oh, I'm not sure what's going on there actually. I think, must, I think he must be caught on something. There you go, he's off now. Yeah, probably a little, little bit of geometry, a little collider just uh, clipped him there. They're, they're a little bit too aggressive in how they charge around at the minute. That's something we're going to have to tweak as uh, we watch a few more people play it. Okay. I mean, I'm not having a bad time, I tell you that much. I'm not having this a bad time. This is a good thing. And the thing is, like right now, I am failing to make you know interesting or articulate points. And what will happen is you'll probably have like a feckin' wall of text from me on Twitter being like, I love this game, here's why I love it. Because I'm enjoying this. And I I am very proud of my my presenting abilities that if I didn't like this game, we'd be able to still have a good stream and talk about it. The fact that I'm being a shite host today, Jim, is because this is feckin' great. I'm glad you're enjoying it, Will. Oh, I'm just kind of stuck up on like food and meds now because, yeah, I did a, I did a left for dead. I was just chewing pills like popcorn as we came through that last area. All right, so there's the shield. Shield powers that. So oh, wait, you do not see me. You do not see me. Ah, but I've also noticed in this map that we got that big compound and there was a lot of stuff there, but we need to find it from some other places or at least wait until that compound's more empty. So, so what we need to do is find the angle we can get on that to disable the shield, which I think is there. Yeah, there it is. There's definitely at least one other big kind of cluster of buildings somewhere on this level. I'm not quite sure where it is. Because uh, all, all, all these layouts are randomised. Um, you can often get a good feel for where stuff's going to be, having played it you know, hundreds of times. But on this yeah. one, yeah, it's, it's hidden away somewhere. Dude, it's just the feckin' shadow of that massive spider hand. <laughs> it's so... I mean, it's feckin' terrifying, but it's brilliant. Yeah, that building over there, I'd get up and have a look in the windows on the side. You'd probably be able to get a better angle on it from there. Could just be there's a little bit of scenery in the way. Oh, here we go. In the words of one of the great Sir Vanillian Ice, you've got to get up to get down. That's the one. Good. Ah, so the fire's still going, but the turret's out. I can work with that. Fucking anomalies. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Look at that. Fucking hell. Amazing. It's Orb Conga. Dun 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 death. Dun 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 death. <laughs> Alright, so that's not an option anymore. And that's fine. Let's try. Um, there might have been more in the compound that I didn't get, so I'm going to try going through the trees back around. Because if I go past the... Yeah. Mr. McSp Sky Spider is going to ruin my day if I go that way. Oh. Feckin' hell. I am sorry again that I'm being a terrible host, Jim. Like, I feel like I finally got you on the show. Because uh, for those that didn't catch when we did the a signal from Tolva stream ages, ages back, um, I was messaging you, Jim, while you were in the pub and you were answering questions. Ooh, you can feck right off, big boy. Uh, and now I finally have you on the show for like live chats and conversations, and I am just running around scared and afraid and alone in the woods with my flashlight. 
It's all good. Well, I, you know, thanks for having us on. It's been uh, it's been really fun. Ooh. Ha. <laughs> uh. What the shit? just about to make the joke. Oh, so Jim, you're gonna have those, uh, you're gonna have some tentacle monsters come out of the water and scare me. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, that'll, that'll be good. Oh, we haven't got around to tentacles yet, but you know, it's uh, it's inevitable. There must always be tentacles. Uh, but instead, we just get uh, Screamy Makora, just screaming at us. It's been like, yo, what's up? I'm a, I'm a creature in the sky, don't want to scream. Ooh, free yeah, he's just doing He's just doing a bit of screaming for now, um, but... Um... He's got more to come. Oh, yay! Wait, no, what's that other noise? That other noise is... Oh, God! Lost in the woods. Trying to find my way to some... MacGuffin, sir. I'm still lost in the woods. And surrounded by angry rumbers. Yeah! Uh, I got five motes of light. Check me out. All right, so that's the entrance. That's the tower. We cleared out the tower. Ah, there was more stuff over this way. I just couldn't tell because of, you know, the whole death and fire. I couldn't yeah, tell. If... There we go. So tell. yeah, it looks it looks like you could probably uh, scrape together enough uh, components on here without having to brave the tower. Yeah. There should have been another big kind of crazy reveal structure though. We haven't seen it, so that's uh, that's interesting. But that could be on me. I've not been using my reveal beam. No, no, you, you would you would know it <laughs> if you saw it. <laughs> it uh, it kind of stands out. Wait, yeah, I mean, get, uh, that's the I tower. Mean, I think it must be hidden some way, somewhere around this way, area of the map. I mean, I guess that's going to be the one downside of doing procedural stuff is that sometimes you can create something that's really brilliant and people might not see it in that run. Yeah, I mean, there was there was the big problem we had on Sir is that people would get slightly better or worse maps because you know that's just the how the way things worked. But if people only played it once, that's it. You know, they're only ever gonna. That was one of the reasons to, to make a sort of handcrafted map with Tolva, right? Was to kind of get back that feeling of control, you know, that we could actually kind of make stuff and know people would experience it in a certain way and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, yeah, we, we found, you know, watching streams of um, Sir, it would just be like, oh, no, this guy's map is just not quite as good as somebody else's and, he would have, you know, they'd be stumbling around or miss something entirely or it just wouldn't turn up for him. Or, you know, by the same token, you'd get someone who would get an amazing map that would just be extraordinary and have some amazing kind of rock formation or something. And, uh, yeah, it would uh, it would just colour the experience for them. Yeah. And uh, there's not much you can do about that. I think, you know, that's 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 the bullet you've got to bite with, with procedural stuff, basically. All right. Got medicine and painkillers. So that all... Oh, actually, I'm just going to... Oh. What I'm not going to do is blunder wildly into a bunch of trip mines. Good work. Good work. Oh. Okay, okay, we got it, we got it. Uh, so that puts us up to 100. So we need one more. We need to hit one more place and then we're good. Oh, Gaffin was like, Will, check to see if the furniture is pushable. I turned around and punted the chair down the stairs. Ow! Oh, are you heckin' kidding me? Yeah, I would, I would heal up before you uh, go outside. You've got a couple of med, med kits there. And we have some food. Yeah, mantle out the window. I'm out of bottles though, so this could get tricky. Oh, sorry everybody, I just realised I was holding my breath quite a lot there. <laughs> oh. Oh. 
Um, Naboo Head's pointing out that the Robo Sands are weirdly satisfying. They really are. They really feckin' are, everybody. I'm not saying I like them, because they only ever mean death and destruction for me, but... Ah, oh, the Zorbs are back. Where's Hando? I think we're clear. I'm sorry that I, I named the Sky Spider Hando Calrissian. <laughs> One of the things that's, uh, that we definitely kind of spotted when we were doing Sir was that um, people are kind of assume that uh, they should be like conserving stuff, but actually, actually, if they do conserve stuff, then they don't get to kind of like muck around and experiment with how stuff works. So although you are scavenging to survive and stuff in this, there's actually tons and tons of loot everywhere, just to make sure you can always get your hands on some kind of loot to have the bottle. Um, but you, you know, all that stuff that you need to be able to play with the whole time is always there. Thank the fecking facts. Well, it's you probably get into, that, get into that window at the bottom there, actually. Yeah, I think you're right, but I just I didn't want to get zapped to the. Don't look at me! Don't look at me! Don't look at me! So many of them! Oh, you know when I said the hand's not close? I was dead wrong. That hand is starting to make its way over this. I, I have never seen so many of those uh, mind bots. I, 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 something about your will, I think. They feckin' knew. You should be able to get in through those windows. I'm not sure why you can't man in. Crouch jump! Crouch jump! Signal your suit to make a duck jump. Come on, you can do it. Maybe not. You should be able to turn off the door with that switch. Anyway. Okay, good, good. Flame door, can you hear me? Oh, feckin' hell! This game is amazing! I uh, can't carry any more medicine. Oh, uh, what's the purpose of medicine? Or is that a... A question for later sections? Alright, this should be enough. Yeah, so disease is basically, we're probably not going to release, um, we're probably not going to put that in the early access stuff, um, but there are going to be loads of ailments and uh, infections to pick up as you uh, traverse, and we want to kind of, um, you want to kind of do a load of stuff with that, but I think probably we're going to hold off doing it straight away. Okay. But we've just sort of left the, uh, yeah, we, we left the collectibles in as a little teaser, because that, I mean, that Parts of that might come along quite quickly. We'll, we'll see how we get on. Yeah, I mean, this is just a, a point of preference. This isn't uh, to to influence your 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 design or your theory. But uh, personally, when it comes to systems like that, I enjoy them if they add an element to rather than add like a countdown timer. In a, a lot of survival titles I've played, they add a um, like an infection system. But what it ends up being is like a you know countdown to death. Yeah, you know, I don't, I, we don't really do kind of death inevitable death like that. It's always going to be a mistake you make uh, that results in death. But I'm thinking, you know, it may have other side effects. Like, I, I always really like the sort of Far Cry 2 way of you know, the sort of diseasey pustules growing up the side of the screen and stuff. So it wasn't necessarily going to, you know, mess you up other than the, the old sort of wheezing, uh, coughing fit or something. Yeah. But, you know, you are going to have to deal with it, you know, just to kind of, you know, quality of life stuff, basically. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember which game it was that we played where if we got an infection or if we injured ourselves, our character would make noise. Uh, feck, I need one, I just need one bit more. Uh, did we, did we get everything here? Oh, shut up. Oh, actually, don't shut up. Let's... Have, a look up the, have a look up the tower. I think, you, I don't think you can have got everything up the tower, I'm not sure. We got two, There is another building up to the side there. Yeah. Uh, I think you may have only got two, and there were three, but there's another building across the compound there that I don't think you've looted yet. Oh, yes. 
So I kind of ran away. Here we go. Um, yeah, that pretty serious looking. Yeah, and I thought that was a really interesting thing. That... Oh, there was another. There was another one by the entrance bunker. Actually, you didn't loot that single story building either. Yeah, look, there's one uh, up there that's yeah. unlooted. And yeah, and you've got there was one on the way out. So if you were to head back to the entrance, there would be uh, and you could get into that flat roof building that was uh, near the start. So I don't think you got. I don't think you looted that yet. All right. Oh yes, because we were about to loot that one, and then uh, the conga train showed up, and that put a right stop to that one. Um, sorry, the point I was trying to make was that the idea of oh, you fucking bad words uh, that. You know, ailments and effects. Miss me. Uh, ailments and effects being more a case of. Oh, oh the feckin' feck. Uh... You know, I, I, I'll make an intellectual point in just a second, Jim. I'm, I'm working on it. I promise it's coming. I'm happy to wait. And I know this will be driving caffeine nuts that I shouldn't be taking this time to loot. I should be sorting the sorting the problems, and instead I am not. Wait. You got a little trigger on the roof there. There we go. Yeah yeah. I mean, we only spent what? An hour hiding in that tower over there? With me freaking out because of giant spider hand and everybody? Question is where? It's the floor above. Oh, there's no ladder in here. Okay. Might be some stairs though. Yeah, behind you. No, no, go back inside. Door at the back. Aha! Not that, not that one. It's almost as if you gave me the player a flashlight and I then didn't use it. It's almost like that. All right, and then we just got to peg it out of here. We don't have to, you know, we don't need anything clever. We've got enough food to keep me going. Ooh, a withered apple, my favorite. Okay, here we go, here we go. Uh, you have enough, head back to the bunker. Yes, yes! Now then, can you make it back alive? Hmm. Um, let's file that under. Maybe! High speed, maybe! Oh yeah, and I'm so grateful for the incredibly generous stamina bar. In a world which relies on you keeping quiet and running, one man will scream his head off as he runs around the- Oh, no! 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 Yeah. Um, so, okay, the point I was trying to make was going to be a smart articulation on um, Far Cry 2 being uh, a really good example of... Maybe it didn't work for the game it, that it was, but it was a great... It's a great touchstone, and it had so many clever ideas in it that... Well, they didn't all necessarily gel. There's a lot of great lessons to be taken from it. Yeah, I think so. I think anyone attempting a game of that size, you know, it, not everything's... It, it, there's no way, you know, everything's going to work. Oh, yeah. But, you know, when there's so much, it's... Yeah, wow. And the thing I was dancing around is I like the idea of um, uh, ailments and statuses that maybe make things more challenging or add an additional thing that you, you need to work with, but don't result in, like, you know... It's not like a wasting disease or essentially like a, you know, poison 2.0 a la RPG. And here we go, We're going through. Yes! Back in the bunker. Oh. Does anyone else remember how breathing works? I seem to have forgotten to do that several times during that last section. Sorry, I missed that last thing you said. Uh, does anyone remember how breathing works? I might have forgotten how to do that in some of that last segment. Um, the thing I was saying before is that I like the idea of um, like ailment statuses and mechanics that add additional challenges rather than just add more like damage over time. 
Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't want to do that. I don't want it to kill you. I don't want it necessarily to. Um, but yeah, I think as I, as I was saying much earlier in the stream, I think doing yeah. something that's much more like um, sort of physical and psychological effect is a, is a really exciting way of doing survival. Yeah. Okay. Holy crud! So this is the to be continued moment. The light keeps us safe is an early access experience and is still under construction. You've just unlocked the Dissolve Light, uh, which will be our next major update. Currently, though, it's the end of the chapter, so thank you for playing. Please check back soon and follow our Steam Curator page for updates. Holy crud, so we did it! You did it, Will. Oh. I'm definitely going to have to make it harder. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. Bring the challenge. Um, though, Giants... Uh, giant sky spider was something fierce. Oh, hang on a sec. Congrats! I'm, thank you. I'm actually going to turn some lights on so that I can I can chat with you a little bit. Uh, so bear with me just a second. Uh, oh, and we make uh, I may do another run of this uh, this evening. Though I won't ask you to stick around for another three hours. Yeah, um, I think I'm, I'm going to have to uh, I'm going to have to get some sleep during this 24 hour period. It, it's going to happen at some point. Um, so if you have any uh, last questions, uh, ladies, gentlemen, one and all, for Jim, now is the time to throw them in. Um, uh, Naboo was asked... No, was it Naboo? Someone was asking a really good question. Uh, darn it. It was a really good one, and I missed it. Uh, it was... Um, oh, yeah, Clank was asking, why did you choose the colour purple as the neutralised colour for turrets? I think it was a color blindness thing. I can't remember now, though. Um, and I'm only asking this because I think it's one of those things that it warrants asking is because, like, are you considering um, uh, colorblind modes, ways for people to change uh, some of the color patterns so that they can observe it better? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that that stuff is we've we've already kind of constructed the uh, the light stuff in game. You know, just in the sort of back end, so that we can uh, we can allow people access to that. Um, I don't think it's in the options yet, but yeah, certainly all all of the um, all the code we need to do it is there. Uh, we, I mean, that's one of the sort of benefits from having done a couple of games now is that those kinds of um, quality of life options, you know, they're, they're there, and we're 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 totally uh, set for doing them. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I want to link the Steam page again, because I'm pretty sure it's up. Yeah. yeah I think it's, uh, it's downtime earlier. Uh, and that will be uh, dropping in uh, 11 days, according to the Steam page. So you'll all be able mm -hmm. to, to get stuck yeah, into that one. Um, Dang. Yeah, no big deal. Though I will say... As, like I was saying earlier, I feel like I'm cheating at the moment, not being game dev side. So uh, I I don't envy uh, people going up to launch, but at the same time, I kind of miss it. So uh, I hope you I hope your launch is is as hectic as it needs to be and as smooth as it can be. Why? Thank you. That's a that's a kind kind curse. <laughs> I like to think of it more as realistic. Um, okay, so my lot haven't thrown in any uh, more hardcore questions, and I think we've covered a lot. We've, you know, we talked about RPS, we talked about your prior stuff. Everybody knows so you're being hunted, and at some point, yeah, at some point I will go back for another stream of that. But it's almost as if I've gotten a new game to play with. Um, cool. Okay. Well, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna call it a night, and I'm gonna say thank you a lot. Well, uh, this has been loads of fun, um, and if any of the guys. Uh, who enjoyed this want to wishlist us then you know i can't not just for us actually but i can't stress how important wishlisting is for steam yeah. now um, so any game that you're a fan of any game that you're intending to get do wishlist us up because it's super important for everyone indeed um and yeah i will be i will be giving it my my glowing mark of um please uh, feel free to use any of my horrendous swearing or clips from this as a back of the box quote because that would make me very very happy <laughs> Absolutely will, buddy. Uh, for your accolades trailer, they'll be just, um, holy shitting fuck ducks, Will Overgod. That's the one. <laughs> uh, 
Um, beta positives, just want to say we love you, Jim. Best of luck with the game because it looks awesome. Uh, Anon said, want to wish you guys well. It's good to see a refreshing game coming out. And yeah, it's a lot of fun to play, everyone. Um, right, so cool. Jim. Thanks very much. Right, I'm going to call it a night because it's, uh, it's getting on a bit here in the UK. All right. And uh, yeah, my cat is grumpy as well. So I better go and uh, give him some fuss. I'm not even All surprised. Right. <laughs> Thank you again, take, dude. Take it easy, Will. All right, cheers then. Bye now. All right. And yeah holy crud so the light keeps us safe um i'm sorry one and all that i uh, wasn't able to announce this ahead of time it was a uh, a little bit touch and go as to whether we were going to get a, a build we could jump in on and then yeah last night at silly o'clock in the morning i got a message from jim being like build's ready i'm just like <coughs> so yeah yeah um right um as Cryostics and people are pointed out, uh, I do need uh, a refresh of my tea and uh, maybe a little bit of ice after that uh, session. So uh, I'm going to take a little, uh, a teeny tiny break, and we we have a choice. We can do another run of this, which is kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, we can waffle on for a bit, or uh, or I can I can dig something out of the bag. I just. Oh, sorry. I'm still kind of, I'm still, I'm, I'm absorbing this game as we're going through. There's so many little great touches and through all the fear and the panic, they shine through. And that last thing, the fecking giant spider, like, oh, oh, that was so good. Um, <laughs> Alpha Deli just like, I just ate supper, so I don't need waffles, but thanks for the offer. The waffle offer, the waffler. Oh, that's me. Uh... Right. You lovely, lovely folks. I am going to go get a cup of tea. Uh, I'm going to be back with you all in just a moment. Let me just move this up here. There we go. Um, and where's my BRB needs tea? It's there. Uh, so I'll be back with you lovely folks in just a second. I'm going to grab a copper. You all should do the same. Uh, grab snacks and tea as required, and we'll go from there. I will. I'll try and keep bring my co thoughts into a more cohesive process after, because I'm still kind of a bit blown away by this, and even at such an early stage. Oh, plus the last doing the VO work. I am such a fan of hers. Uh, as, after um, Bedlam, she just knocked it out of the park. So the fact that she's back to doing like video game voice acting stuff makes me very very happy. Oh, okay, okay. For realsies, though, this time. I'll be back in just a second. Tea break is a go. Tea break is a go. Do you want a hecking tea break? Yes, I'd like a hecking tea break.
Hey up, you lovely, lovely folks. Oh, hang on, let's turn on lights. Because we've done the scary. Ow, back, back. Okay, we're good. Ah, uh, okay. So I'm pondering it. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd actually like to have another run at this. If it's all right with you lovely, lovely folks, uh, be a kuaz. There feels like there's a bunch, especially in these swamps that I didn't do. I feel like I, in the swamps, I got into a, a bit of a rhythm. Hang on, I'm just sorting out my ice pack for a bit. Uh, so we're going to, I'm going to keep chatting with your lovely selves and take a little break of it. <laughs> Numbers were like, no, it's not okay. <laughs> well, fuck, that's my day ruined. Uh, um, oh, fucking hell, that's good. Because uh, I feel like, especially in the Causic Wastes, we got, um, there was a lot of the environment that I didn't um, observe. Uh, Aaron says, how is the hand? It's pretty much the same as it's been a week. It's not um, worse, but it's not any better. So, uh, chances are it's not in a good way. So I'm going to go see a medical professional and we'll go from there. Uh... Uh, but I'm going to do that in the week. But that's another story. Oh. Um, that is not a thing that you all need to worry about. Because uh, it should not interrupt our streams. And, you know, it's not going to stop me hanging out with you lot. I just... Holy feckin' feck. So I was... I was putting my thoughts and my feelings together. Um... That initially, from what I'd seen of this, I was expecting more of a kind of, uh, I was expecting more of a nostalgia trip. I was expecting it to be a Stranger Things. Oh, look at this! Isn't it really 80s? Oh, wasn't the 80s great? Oh, 80s reference this, 80s reference that. But really, we didn't spend any time on that at all. Like the aesthetic was there certainly, but the aesthetic was there certainly, but it was something more so than that. And that's really cool. That is really, really cool. Um, it doesn't lean too hard on nostalgia. It does feel like all the best parts of Tolva and all the best parts of Sell You're Being Hunted are kind of brought together with something that feels a little bit more grown up. Um, <laughs> Aspect says, Blood Dragon! Oh, it does have that. Now, Blood Dragon's amazing. And Blood Dragon does this whole, you know, like 80s parody. And it does it so well. Just so feckin' well. But it's, you know, Blood Dragon's trying to do something specific and it does that. And that's really cool. This is trying to unnerve and unsettle. Like learning what each monster does. I mean, each robot does and how it affects. The visual design of these creatures isn't always as, uh, what's the word? Uh, isn't always as evident as to how they're going to interact with you. And I think that's really cool as well. Like, from the orbs and people like that, I couldn't just look at them and be like, I know exactly what that thing's going to do. I had no idea. I had no idea. Uh, I'll tell you what else I'm going to do while I'm waffling on with you lot, is I'm going to open the fucking red vines. It's happening. Please forgive my cursing. Ah, feck. Ah, feck. Yeah. We're finally doing it. Uh, the uh, power of American Costco. Look at this son of a bitch. A jar of red vines the size of my face. Well, actually, bigger than my face. It's like torso sized. A human torso of sugar. Um, I felt that there was a real, even at this early stage, it really shows there's a real care and craft to it all. And it was interesting to hear that it was procedurally generated. Because So You're Being Hunted feels like a procedural generation game. If any of you saw my playthroughs of that, there was more than once where I got my sorry ass turned around and I could not, for love nor money, find out where I was going to go. Yes, that was partially me being a stupid. I know, shocking, Will being a stupid. But, yes, I'm using a pen to open these red vines. No, there's no way this can go wrong. Um, but that was the procedural generation. As, as Jim was saying, like it was hard for him watching Let's Plays and streams of So You're Being Hunted. Because sometimes, the environment would end up being less than favourable. We are in. Less than favourable for the individual. And sometimes, the map would be amazing and uh, off the chain and brilliant. And sometimes, it would be a bit naff. 
and the only thing. Uh, right, poor cat, you can just go on this. There we go. Just having a little poking out there. Um, sometimes the. Sometimes that's hard to see as a creator because you always want people to have a good one. Oh, and Anon's saying, right, Will, chat, heading to bed. It's uh, hitting up one and can't do up uh, any later. Anon, have an absolutely wonderful evening. Get some great sleeps and we'll see you next stream, yo. Um, so just, okay, quick show of hands here. How many of, of you here have played Sir You're Being Hunted? How many of you have had the, the chance to, to get stuck into that? Uh, and caffeine says, "I return." Um, I tell you what, let me let me bring back some chap hop. Just a little bit of chap hop, because uh, the melancholy of the the melancholy of the OST is a little bit haunting. Um, so caffeine says, "Haven't." Beta says, "Nope." Saw your run through though. Oh, Alpha says, "Got stuck into your playthrough, but not one of my own." Okay. I mean, I still recommend giving it a play. The procedural generation stuff of that make it really interesting. And it does feel like, you know, your adventure is your adventure. And I'll have to go back and play it at some point. Alright, give us a red vine. Wait, how, how, how open? How? Oh, Christ alive. It just hit me like a wave of sugar. Ah. These are really gross. Damn it. Do you want else like red vines? Ah, those are really nasty. Ugh. Well, I rolled the dice and I failed, but there we go. Blah. 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 Not good. Not good at all. Oh, it's not fucking terrible. Maybe Cat likes them. Who knows? Anyway. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, Ford of Mystics asking, how's the poor feeling? Uh, I've got some ice on it now from that run. And we're going to do another run of this next. Uh, I want to explore a little bit more of the environment. And now that I know what I'm looking at, like we can we can keep going with that one. Uh, Clank says, I'll take the red vines off you. Um, <laughs> Clank also lives on Mars. That's going to be a hell of a commute from uh, from Mars. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I would like to get stuck into this again because I was I was kind of drinking it all in. Um, the layout of the bunker, uh, how we use the, the moats on that machine and whether it does anything. Like, holy crud, everybody. Holy crud. The game is really good. Really good. Oh, oh that's much needed. Bloody, bloody marvellous. So yeah, what I'm thinking for today is I'm going to give this another run. And then after that, we'll decide uh, where to go through next. Could do some Let It Die. Could do some Salt and Sanctuary. Haven't decided. Have not decided. Uh, I'm definitely not down for anything uh, too FPS twitchy related because this Mother Hubbard. So that puts a lot of our usual wheelhouse out, I'm afraid. But we're going to have a good day. And we're going to have a good day together. So then, yeah. Oh, dear Lord. Meow Kitty Sakura saying, still working on Willette? Ugh. The people don't know, do they? The people don't know what's coming. But it's coming. Um, what was I going to add? Oh, just that uh, the Artsy Poe has also done a uh, Willette uh, drawing as well. So, oh, those of you who joked about it, this is on you. You made this happen. Um, if, it, if I'd been left to my own devices, you know, it would have been it would have been hidden from the world. But here we are. Here we are. Uh, trying to think what else. Oh, reflective. What ho, friend? How goes it? Um, so, so far, you've just missed uh, Jim from uh, Big Robot Games. 
uh, one of the original founders of Rock Paper Shotgun and creator, well, one of the creators of So You're Being Hunted and The Signal from Tolva. And we got stuck into their latest game, uh, which is um, The Light Will Keep Us Safe. No one else, this is the literal stream exclusive. No one else in the world has gotten to stream this game before. And I feel utterly spoiled. Uh, so I want to I wanna have another run at it and go from there. Uh, we did one run through, it was really good. And I want to do another because, yo, I can, I can. Oh, I'm just icing my hand, which is why I'm having a chat with your good selves. Oh. Oh, there we go. It's a little bit better. I'm so afraid of just like fucking dislocate it or something. I'm pretty sure if I dislocated it properly badly, it would be in sweet fucking agony the entire time. Or if I'd broken it, I'm sure it'd be screaming at me 24-7. But there we go. There we go. Uh, as, as you have all been uh, shouting at me, we will be... Oh, I will be uh, finding out the state of it next week. Ah, uh, the man! What ho, friend! And also, what ho to everybody that uh, came on by. If I did not say hello to you as you were coming in, if I've been less than my usual communicative self, I do apologise. I do apologise. So let's turn off the BRB. Uh, let me just quickly check something. Because I know there's people that I need to say a thank you to. Um, I need to say a thank you to some numbers. The Great Odo, Caffeine, Isocrid, The Artsy Po, um, Green Fire, and Stooge, and then Isocrid again. Thank you all for donating. I know you were doing it to mess with me, but yeah, like, it's thanks to you lot that I've been able to do stuff like this. Like, I was able to have first play at a game that I feckin' love and was able to show everybody. That's a thing that I'm able to do because you lot keep supporting me. So yeah. Oh, oh and Reflective, I'm sorry you're having a bad time. Uh, reflective saying that they got uh, catfish into their new job as hide for one thing but will be doing something else they really don't want to do. But yeah, I... I am sorry that is happening. Um, in community management, that's that's quite a common uh, occurrence. Where what happens is that they give you a uh, a job spec that pertains to a lot a lot of different things, and then when you do finally get through the door, it's like, oh, actually, you're going to be focusing all your time on X, and you're like, oh, but X is only meant to be a small part of my role. You mean you want me to do this instead of being a CM? And they never say it, but there we go. Uh, Crystic says, uh, will. Uh, what it sounds like from my diagnosis, uh, a hard bump and a sprain which causes the joint area to swell up and will cause considerable amount of pain and loss of mobility temporarily. Would be painful, but it heals up with rest. I mean, cryostics, I can give it another couple of days. The problem is that this is America. Um, if I go get an x-ray, that is a chunk of money. And that is a chunk of money that I'm not using to survive. <laughs> so, while I'm not... I'm not doctor averse. I am fiscally sensible these days. Like, yo, the last uh, fiscally um, irresponsible thing that I purchased was the um, the hoodie from Hollow Knight, and I told you all about that, and I apologise profusely. I I think you can all understand where I was coming from, and it was a thing that I needed in my life. But yeah, <laughs> the man with I'm not doctor averse. I'm averse to being broke. I, for this, to, to be able to continue to do this, I will sleep on sofas, floors, I I will take cheap rooms across Seattle, I will keep doing that so I can do this, but, you know, uh, an x-ray is not something that is going to come cheap, and I do miss the NHS, something fierce right now, uh, And but caffeine is right, maintenance of the human body does fall under survival, I know. Uh, Narciss says, if it's been a week and it still hurts, needs ice, get checked by a professional, please. Yeah, that's where we're at now. Like, I, it's, it's healed a bit, but I still have the same amount of mobility I had earlier in the week. And it's not, 
gotten to the point now where I can work through it. There's, no, no, as in, like, it's not... My mobility has not improved any more since the beginning of the week. So there we go. Uh, Prof Farnsworth says, uh, When you get the chance, can you check and see if my donation has been processed? It didn't show up on screen, and I wanted to give you money. Um, let me have a look. Let me have a look. Uh, and for reflective adding, what's bad is that it's a government contract. So it's basically, uh, and it's basically illegal, and will come back on me. So either I do it and deal with the blowback, or blow the whistle and have no job. That's that's really lame, and I'm so sorry, dude. But, you know, if, if you need us, we're here. Uh, and uh, Prof, um, to Prof Farnsworth, your donation has not come in so far as I can see. Uh, we haven't had any donation problems today, but the last one was numbers at uh, 3.44, which was, oh, just uh, over an hour ago. Just under an hour ago. I know how time travel works. Oh, So, yeah. I I'm almost done icing my hand. Um, this uh, chap hop mix is just long enough for, for us to give it a shot. Um... Today, I'm so happy that they got the uh, the Scottish lash to do the voice acting for it as well. Because uh, how many of you were got to see the stream of Bedlam we did uh, beginning of the year? Because that game is phenomenal. Uh, you jump between different um, like uh, games, uh, first-person shooter genres in a crazy little setup. Uh, Alex saying, go to the community clinic and ask for the financial aid counsellor. Yes, I will do that. Um, uh, but I've been given a few tips of places I can go to. It's basically like, if I go if I go to certain places, uh, it's cheaper, but I have to pay them up front. If I go to certain other places, um, I can potentially get free medical, uh, a free medical look at, but I have to... Fill out some forms, go to a consultancy, and if they decide that I'm not viable for free, they'll charge me. And if they do that, then I will get charged a lot. Oh. Well, reflective, that's that's badass of you to do that. And if there's a thing we can do to help, then certainly. Make sure, obviously make sure that you're okay, because we will worry, but... That's a that's a real cool thing, yo. Uh, anyway, anyway, y'all didn't come here to hear me waffle about um, the varying uh, strengths, benefits, and downsides of varying countries' medical systems. Y'all came here to see the light, to see the light. Uh, and that, that is what we are going to do. So, we're going to do another run of Enter the... Uh, we're going to do another run of The Light Keeps Us Safe. Now, the bunker sections will be the same. The maps are proc gen. So, once we get out into the world, we're going to see some interesting stuff, yo. So, step back. Ah. Uh. Step back as we open the curtains. The man with the way is lit, the path is clear. We require only strength to follow it. Um, okay. So, uh, this is the bunker. You have been hiding down here from the machines. But it is time, uh, but that time is an end. Hit F to interact, R to cycle weapons. You all saw that beginning. The one piece of interactivity in here was uh, a message. Perhaps one day someone will read these notes, but I fear there is no one left to read anything. Uh, I might be the final bit of stardust to no beauty. All right, don't get all, don't get all self-referential, what the hell? You are lucky, in a way. You got to hide down there for so long. But now you have to deal with it all alone. 
I'm sorry. But you do. Hey! Feckin' hell! Prof, thank you kindly! You... I hope you didn't feel you had to do that, but thank you kindly. Prof, with a $25 donation, triggering the dramatic duck, and just for the hand. Yeah. Again. Thank you, yo. Just... Yeah. How come you all are so feckin' lovely? Wait, no, hang on. Hang on. Bear with me just a second. I just need to do that. There we go. And then I need to move this a second. So you can see my stats. There we go. So, Prof, thank you kindly. And everybody else, like, yo, today has been stupidly good day. Like... We got a feckin' world exclusive here, people! We got a world exclusive! That's awesome! So, yeah. Uh, Caffeine says, right, going into luck mode uh, to pack some more, be back through. Uh, Caffeine, once I'm done with the stream today, then we can start making cool kid plans. Alright? Oh. I mean, just this tiny bunker protected by light. Like, what is that? It's like a crystal formation? We know it's not the sun, because the sun is broken. The sun is broken like a shattered egg. Uh, Kilgan says, just joined here. What's the deal with fecking? <laughs> well, what ho, friend? How goes it? Um, we are playing uh, The Light Will Keep Us Safe, and it's fecking brilliant. It's fecking brilliant, yo. Uh, all the fecks are because I try, I try and keep my swearing to a minimum. It's not enforced, but it's something that I've been doing since I started streaming full-time, and it makes me happy. Um, You're ooh. running out of food if you haven't run out already. You're going to have to go outside. You should have gone into the light like the rest of us. I mean, so we've completed the this build. We don't know what the light is. We don't know where everyone else has gone. The machines are out there just fucking shredding everybody. But we still... Be something useful around, of course. I think we left a few things behind. We don't know who's talking to us. We don't know what they are or where they are. You'll be able to use that device for a bunch of things. But it looks like it needs work. And we need... I can't remember how we need... Uh, I think we need 60 to do the first upgrade. So yeah, so jump back into chat. Uh, the man said in before the... This is just Soma again with the light, it's the arc! Uh, and Killen said, I once did training for jump. Uh, uh. Oh, trying to get uh, curses out of the system. It's very tricky. Um, there's a few that have helped me. We knew something was wrong. Something wrong with the machines. But at first, we couldn't see them. By the time we figured this stuff out, it was too late. We had to go into the light. You need a mysterious... You need this mysterious dead device back online somehow. Uh, return here when you have the right kind of fuel. Now, did we find any of it? Because I wonder if maybe we can get, like, motes of light going in this build. Uh, so, yeah, Prof Farnsworth, that did work. We got through a $25 donation from your good self. So, thank you kindly, yo. Um, I want to test a couple theories. Like, can I uh, jump on stuff that doesn't exist? No, they... Wow, that stuff just doesn't exist. I broke my hand and put my uh, thing behind my back. Uh... 
Got that one this time. All right, let's head out into the world and let's see how the uh, wait. Let's see how the world's been changed since this time, because it's going to generate us a new map from last time, and I I, I definitely want to go off the beaten track, and start exploring some of the shit that I didn't see the first time. Uh, the Campo Santo, um, what should we call it? Uh, fire towers got me uh, got me watching some other stuff, so. Supposedly there are some excellent Easter eggs in this, not just the Campo Santo one, so. Oh, except for we've got the bug again. Uh, again, you lovely, lovely folks. Uh, you lovely, lovely folks. This is an exceedingly early build. And there are, as with all early games, there are bugs, there are problems. Things happen. So I do apologise, but I'll run back and get that one going again. Uh, so Kilgan's asking what engine is this made in? Is this made in Unity? I'm just going to continue through, and we just. Cheese it through this time. The problem is saying it looks very similar to a bug I had in my own procedural lucky. generation unity. Uh, you know sometimes it generates nothing and gets stuck in the loading screen. You've got to hide down there for so long. But now you have to deal with it all alone. I'm sorry. High speed moves! But you do. God, this game is pretty. I know I keep saying this, but it keeps striking me like, damn, this game's pretty. Running out of food if you haven't run out already. I know. You're going to have to go outside. You should have gone into the light like the rest of us. Speed run. There'll be something useful around, of course. I think we left a few things behind. Alright, let's You'll get be back able into the world. To use that device for a bunch of things. But it looks like it needs work. We knew something was wrong. Something wrong with the machines. But at first we couldn't see them. By the time we figured this stuff out, it was too late. We had to go into the light. Wait, I can be jump there. Shine a light on those things. It'll keep their heads down. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yay! There we go! Took a couple of roads, but yeah, now we're back on the bleak road. Okay, so let's have a look and see what's different from last time. Wow, a whole feckin' lot. That's burnt out. Wow, this is entirely different. They've ruined this place. Look. There's nothing left. Fucking hell. So here's one of the cool things about this. That up there, that's not the moon. That's I've got to go for a while. I'll be back. That's the sun. Uh, anyway, now I know what I'm doing, I can start exploring and finding cool stuff. Like moats. Ooh, what's this? Got ourselves a trash helicopter here. That's not how you park a helicopter. I don't even understand why it's like that. All 
All right, let's go pick up those moats. And now we know we're a lot safer in the early levels. We can we can work with this. Oh, shit, shit. I don't think we even know what the moats do at the moment, but yeah. Um, so there's a little discussion going back and forth about uh, Unity versus uh, UE4 at the moment. I'd like to point out that uh, last week we had Salt and Sanctuary creator Scar Studios on our show. And they have been making all of their games in initially XNA and then after that in an off-brand XNA. Like an open source supported version. And do you want to know what else? They're still making some cracking games. I I don't... I always want to prefix the kind of the uh, the conversation about engines with the fact that if you make the game, it's it's what you use to bring it together that matters. All right, actually, I'm gonna try heading out into the woods because before we hit a bit of the water, but I wonder what's out this way. Oh, fucking Jesus Christ! Fuck! Oh, fucking hell! I realised we we're going to go for brown trout time quite so early on in the game. weird. That's so feckin' God! Uh, Dashkill says, could you aim your reveal build at him once you have it? I don't think so. Um, when we got the reveal beam, uh, or the reveal light, I should say, like, it didn't do anything, like, positive or negative against him. It just, it just did. So, I don't know what we're meant to be experiencing from that thing. It sure as heck ain't a friend. Or if it is a friend, it's a very screamy loud friend. How are we doing for balls? Oh yeah, we did great. Alright. Not today, turret. Not today. So this is all new. The helicopter is new. I have no idea what's going on. How are you? <laughs> Clank says, "But Will, you're the, li the la you're the screamy loud friendo." Yeah, but not intentionally. Okay, yes, I am very loud. Let's be honest. Do you want some dustbin? Anyone want to see dustbin food? Hey, Zenro! What ho, friend! How goes it? Um, so, we are playing uh, the light... Okay, I'm cool. I'm cool. Uh, we are playing uh, The Light Keeps Us Safe. Which is the next title by uh, Big Robot Studios. This is the first... This is the first ever stream of this game. At least according to the devs. I don't know why they'd, uh... Gotcha! God, this game gets me... Give me the heebie-jeebies! We're definitely um, so we've already done one run through of this, so we're exploring out into the into the vast wilderness. 
This game still made me jump a bunch of times, but just not in the ways I was expecting. Oh, oh excuse me. I do apologise for that. These turrets, like there's no tomorrow. So, Kilgan, Prolo, I understand we have our, our thoughts and feels, but I'm going to say again it. Oh, feck. Oh, feck! God darn it! Fuck! Fuck! Going back in the woods. That's it. I'm going out. I'm gonna go live in the woods. I'm gonna be a light shining hermit. Ooh, another moat. We still don't actually know what the moats are used for. I just, I'd, a Jim would not tell us. He also said that these things later on we will have to worry about. You'll hear that, right? Feckin' hell. Feckin' hell! Back entrance, something. Oh, yes, there is. Woohoo! I am the cleverest person who did a clever. Well, this is a good time to have a, a sip of tea. And once again, I apologise for not being my, my my usual articulate self, everyone. Uh, when this game goes, it goes fast. And at first, you're like, Oh, it's cool. I know what I'm doing. I have to worry. I, I get it now. I'm good at video games. But it knows. It feckin' knows. Oi. Hey! Your timing was slightly off, dear, dear Farnsworth. But we did get a... But thank you kindly for the $5 donation with BOO! Alright, is this... Should we get the... Uh, should we get the haunting roars back on, then? We can do that. Because we've already run through this once. You'll want to throw some scares at. You know you're welcome. What do you say? Should we turn on the, uh, the monster roars? Navalis says, yes, Monster Rules. Prof says, please do. Alrighty. And Prof, again, thank you kindly for the donations, yo. 
So let me jump over here. Um, but I am going to need a cool... Okay, alert box. Bear with me all just a second. Uh, can I throw some distortion so that the monster sound... I... Probably... Um... Wait, hang on. Sorry. Uh, there's some slightly weird stuff going on. Okay, here we go. So, first things first. Bear with me all just a second, I do apologise. Uh, let's go for the Devolver throw money at the screen. Because that doesn't stop being funny. And we will change the sound to... God darn it, I hate that. You feckin' Pavloved me into fear with that sound, I swear. Uh, I don't have a robo-horror sound, but... Um, if we continue doing this uh, for later days, then I will absolutely go for it. Right. It is set and ready. And I'm just going to put it to editor, not live, so I can't see if someone has made a donation. Okay. Monster sound is in effect. Use it as much or as little as you would like. Let's continue. Okay, so we've got 20. We need 60 to progress, but really I just want to explore this area because it feels like there was lots of it that we didn't see. And it's interesting that the road leads us to the compounds. Like, if we follow the roads, we'll know. Ah, there's another moat. <laughs> ah, back! The Artie Poe with uh, one dollar donation. Spook test! Guys are monsters. Uh, though what we can do is if we end up doing like a, a Halloween stream or something along those lines, uh, we can set up uh, a bunch of different sounds. Sun is broken. This game creeps me out. The pacing, the sound, everything. Now let's turn it up. Bring the noise. What's that? Oh, it must be like a gas station or something. Let's go check it out. Oh, cool. You go in there. This the thing is, the gas station was not there first time. Now the green that you see up there, that's the that's the the power around a compound. So that's something we can go check out. I do want anything. One thing from the shop. I'm just gonna do a quick quick sweeps. Quick sweepy sweeps. Damn it! There's nothing in the shop. Ugh. I'm just gonna get like a cornetto or something. And there's nothing. Feck effect. Oh, speaking of fecking facts, it's the eyeball of hate. Wait, what's that up there? Oh no, it's just a interesting. Oh, number says, how long do you think you'll be streaming? I don't know. Uh, it's a Saturday. Um, I'll keep going as long as uh, I've got the physicalities to do so. You know. Ah, Jesus, back. The man with 
Testing, testing, a one, two, three, testing. Thank you kindly for the five dollars. Like, yo. Yeah, still trying to get as many... Because maybe the moats are the fuel we need to put into the machine. I didn't try that, so... I don't know. It's interesting that the moats make sound as well. Like, I can see this being one of those games that I really desperately want to theory craft, you know what I mean? Oh, I should eat some bloody food, shouldn't I? Fool of a took. Fool of a took! Pop back! <sighs> Isocrit, thank you kindly for the five dollars with Watch out! You're about to get spooked! No shit, Sherlock. Oh, this game's so good. The lighting of it, the, the speed at which everything goes from being A-OK -okay to being an abject panic session of fear and terror. And the light shall guide the way. Oh, feck, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. I think we are okay. Oh. That was a little bit touch and go there. That, that was a little bit intense. Oh. Oh, Austrian chocolates. That's what's for dinner. Creepy, 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 keeping it quiet, doing a thing. Oh. Professor Farnsworth, thank you kindly for the five dollar donations. Also, feck, thank you kindly for the donations. I was trying to, I was, I was trying to work out if there's thing we can do with those, like shards. Because there's gonna be something, right? Okay. Oh, piss. Triple piss! Ow! Ah! Feck! Three kinds of wee! Oh. You're on a roof. Oh. And breathe, and breathe, and hope, and pray. Okay. 
I'm not quite ready to scream no full damage yet, but that wasn't too bad. But I do feel like I actually know what I'm doing in this area, which has made me feel pretty cool. Oh. And we found a little bit more. A little bit more to explore. A bit more to find. Old medics cannot carry any more health supplies. Well, let's change that. There we go. And I'm starting to feel like a real badass in this game. Ah, and this turret has no panel. Sorry, this might get a little bit loud here. I do apologize. It's frightfully noisy in this room. So we've got enough to make the uh, the next bit, but I'd kind of like to explore the area a little bit more. Because, you know, we're doing real well, and this early area, we now can know the pattern much more. m m m m m multi feck 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 Gotta love all that lightning sound, right? Oh, bloody hell, everybody. Bloody hell. Bastards. I already told thee. I already told thee. I said, I said there'll be floating balls around that way. Didn't I? Didn't I tell thee? Our prophet told thee. And there they were. Right, clear as day. Right, bunch of floating ball bastards. Ah, fucking shit in a bin bag. <sighs> the man with loud noises. Tired first. Uh, <laughs> Prof Answer says, Will, thank you for making my Saturday night. Oh, I'm very glad. Um, my Friday night ended up being my Saturday night. So if I can if I can pass on to other people to have a very good evening, I feel I've done my job. We still don't know what those shards are. It's very interesting. Except for exceedingly loud. Why 
What's interesting as well is this does have like a whole like post fall of humanity feel to it. In the sense that like So You're Being Hunted had great level design but felt... It didn't feel like a place where people lived, even robotic or otherwise. Going in. Yes, I'm feeling brave. Uh, the proto is saying, I never finished my run of surf. It's entirely worth it still. God, that was that was meaty. I might have made a terrible mistake in my choice of oi no. I might have made a terrible mistake in my choice of how I've approached this. I mean as the brother's saying, dodging robots is an everyday experience. It's an everyday occurrence. Especially like if you live in the north of England or in the Midlands, like you spend so much of your day dodging robots for realsies, it, it loses some of its kind of quaint charm, you know? Hello, friends! Ah, Shaco Draconis! We are on our second run through of um, The Light Will Keep Us Safe, which is the next game from the team that made So You're Being Hunted. This is the official stream exclusive, like, not even kidding. And I've, I've totally not been super over hyper stoked about this. Totally, I've been absolutely zen. Totally nonchalant. And Prodo says, right, I have to tab out. Uh, my sister is uh, drinking and I'm her designated driver. Wish me luck avoiding death by a posh robot. Yeah, I know, it's... It's, the Midlands are still pretty bad, and Blackpool's just lost. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I agree with abandoning Blackpool entirely, but you know, what else could they have done? Oh, this is gonna hurt. Oh God, that noise is awful. Ugh. Oh. Two for two. Oh. All right, now we didn't get hurt quite so bad. Yeah. I'm so sorry, everyone. Right, let's get the feck and feck out of here. We've seen the compound. We've done most of the stuff and things. And I'm getting rather tired of uh, electrified chunks of metal scaring the crap out of me. Oh. <laughs> Why do we do this? The man, they one dollar donation, saying, uh, uh, what? Like, oh, Jesus, fucking feck! Okay, but why, though? Christ, in a crapping handbag! No! Back! 
Caffeine with a $1 donation. Thank you kindly saying, nonchalant. Is that what they're calling terrified screams these days? Shut up, dude. Everyone thinks I'm cool. People totally think I'm cool and not at all make jump at this game. I'm really enjoying this though. Ah, there we go. That's what I was hunting for. Back! <sighs> Prof Farnsworth with a $5 donation. Thank you kindly. I probably shouldn't just curse immediately as people are kind enough to donate, but thank you, yo. Thank you. Oh, it's like a cardiovascular workout, this. Jumpstart my heart with mad jump scares. Oh. Beta Positive says, Will, how well do you handle horror movies? Just curious. Well, the problem is there's a lot of formulaic setup in the way that horror delivers. And once you know the pattern of how a horror movie works, most of them don't work. Uh, like, unsettling psychological, you know, horror. The kind that doesn't freak you out there and then, but makes you, you know, question your life existence for the next three weeks. And... You know, body horror is always nasty. But for the most part, yeah, horror movies have kind of lost their power. Right. First section cleared. We saw a lot of interesting stuff that time. Oh. Uh, Shackle Dracona says, Hey, uh, have you checked out Wondersong yet? Wondersong's not out yet, is it? Uh, and if I'm thinking the right thing, Wondersong is the... No, that's War Song. Which one's Wonder Song? So I'm saying Wonder Song came out today. Oh, feckin' feck! The man with, Meanwhile, we're terribly unpredictable. Ain't that the feckin' truth? Alright. Now, I think these moats are part of the fuel source for this. I guess it's not working yet, but... Oh, excuse me. It's my tea. You lot wearing me out. So Shackle saying it was released two days ago about a bard saving the world through song. Oh, is that the one where you uh, uh, kind of sing in different colours to solve problems and whatnot? It looked interesting. Uh, I think I need to give it a proper, proper look to understand it better, but it's not... All right, the flashlight has been upgraded with a charger beam. Nice. And now we can do stuff and things. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to have a quick look at that one, uh, Alpha, just so I can see if I'm thinking of the right one. Wow, is Steam struggling today for everybody? That is very weird. Yes, that was the one I was thinking of. I've not played Wonder Song, and honestly, I only started hearing about it because... Um, like loads of peeps have been, uh, loads of peeps I know have been, uh, really enjoying it the last couple of days. But in all honesty, like, yeah, I didn't know about it until other people around me started playing it. So I claim no great knowledge. Woo! Woo! Mm. Okay, so now we're heading into the, uh, the sulfur, no, the... I'm trying to remember what it was called now. Well, we'll be there in just a second, so... Kaklaenka. Ah, the corroded streams. Huh. <laughs> corroded streams, because it's streams. Oh, fucking hell, this game. 
Oh, the Campo Santo base is nice nearby. But I wonder if the spider's close. So in the last run, there was a massive mechanical spider, like, patrolling the wastes. But for some reason, it was a little bit stuck. So... This is darn robots! So last time we played this, while there was a spider bot, it wasn't active like this one. Oh, feck, feck. Oh, feck, feck. Holy shit! Oh, gotta remember to breathe. Really gotta remember to do the whole breathing thing. It's, it's not as quaint as uh, I might have thought. It's actually necessary. Who knew? Who knew? Oh. Oh. There you lovely folks, I might actually have to either rotate game or... Uh... Yeah, I might have to rotate game to something with a pad, because... Uh... Yay! We made it to the... Check it out! A game about characters in their 40s is rare enough. To be despondent, struggling people is a truly special thing. To be about despondent, struggling people is a truly special thing. Yay! And if you haven't played Fire... Whoa, holy crap! Hey! Fucking... <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, it's hero to the people, Dan Jones! How goes it, yo? Dude, we're playing this. Um, the light keeps us safe. It's going to be the next game by uh, the peeps who made So You're Being Hunted and um, uh, The Signal from Tolva. And they gave us, like, exclusive first stream on this today. So we've been playing... We've done one playthrough. We're going to do another. And it's pretty fucking good. Except for there's a giant mechanical hell spider down there. So I'm just trying to distract it away. Um, so, yeah. How's things going with your good self, yo? Oh, yeah. Uh, Dan, check this out. That thing up in the sky? That's not the moon. That's the sun. Like, yo. This game is... Uh, this game is style for days. There's like a little compound there, and there's main compound there. What's that? A pointy tower. Let's go check that out. Um. So yeah, we've been having a bloody good day. Also, what was that? Hang on a hecking second. Hang on a hecking. Oh, feckin' Shackled Reconnus, you lovely mother hubbard. Sorry, everybody. Whilst we were chatting, Shackled Reconnus. Hang on. Let me just... No, wait, no. Yeah. Shackle to Connors just sent us that. Saying, Will, 
for sharing with friendos seems to be the kind of thing that would be a good stream where we want to be happy and feel better afterwards. Shackle, thank you kindly. So yeah, I guess we're adding Wonder Song to the to the play. Uh, also, I really need to get rid of that cake picture because um, yeah, Shackle Reconnus, thank you, yo. That's super cool. And the premise behind a game where you're playing a bard saving the world, like, I don't want to say I've got a certain self-interest in that, but yo! Rhymes and Bruce says, so, the vile Daystar was destroyed by, uh, destroyed to fight robots. I'm sad, I missed so much of this. Well, um, Rhymes, we're on our second run, so, oh, and we know we can get rid of these guys now. Um, so yeah. Pull up, uh, a chunk of digital furniture, take your weight off, and come hang out with us, yo. We've got plenty of time. Uh, the levels in this are procedurally generated, so everything outside of the bunker, we have no idea where it is. It's 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 random. Um, it follows very much on the same footsteps as it follows very much in the footsteps of so you're being hunted in terms of like, you know, survival and uh, survival and escapades. But it's feckin' brilliant. I'm sorry. That was a that was an entirely incohesive sentence. I'm really liking this game. It puts me the heck on edge, but Oh feck <sighs> Thank you kindly Dashkel for the five dollar donation with Rawr Let's get the crud out of me. I was in a bin. So yes, to you, heroes of the people, Dan Jones. How you been doing, yo? Uh, I hear you got back into Monster Hunter on PC with a vengeance. So I hope you're having a feckin' splendid time with that. Uh, I will be getting back into that once my hand is functioning again. Oh, let's go check out this water tower. Got like a Looney Tunes vibe going on. <laughs> a dash with like, oh hey, yeah, new cards work. Uh, Dan says, yee. Almost caught up with my PS4 version. Holy crap! Your PS4 version had like crazy high rank stuff though. Oh, this is going to be bad. This is going to be bad. Uh, uh. That feckin', the broken sun there. The green overcast skies. Alright. So now I'm just gonna find a way inside this place and we'll go from there. Let me just make sure the spiders aren't following. Which it still might be. Oh Jesus fucking Christ! God damn it! Thank you, f thank you for the host as well. So Dan, I'm still, I'm still working to get. Uh, I don't have quite as much kit as I had the, uh, the PS4 version, but I'm just upgrading my my high tier stuff. If I hadn't busted my feckin' hand, we'd probably be playing Monster Hunter together this weekend. I mean, Dan, if you're up for it, once I'm done with this run, if you wanna, if you don't mind hanging out with my low ranked ass, we could do some Monster Hunter this afternoon. I got nothing else going down. Just need to get into this feckin' building. Uh, but you do not have to answer now, and it is entirely up to you. I apologise, I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. And uh, Dan says, yeah man, I'm game for some hanging. Way cool. Alright, well I got this section and then one more to finish. And then a break and then... Uh, yeah, and then let's hunt some monsters together. I'd really like that, dude. Uh, if my hand's up for it. If, if it can't, then I'll tap out, but...
sec. Feck and feck, I'm so stuffed. Feck! I'm going to die down here. Oh, the Arctic Post says, speaking of which, where were painkillers last taken? Oh, it has been a while. Feck and feck. Feck and feck, you don't see me. La la la, you can't see me. La la la, I'm invisible. I'm a tiny invisible child. Tiny invisible child. Tiny. So tiny. Please don't eat me. Ah! Feck! Oh, this feckin' game! This feckin' game, everybody. Well then, I tell you what. Dan, if it's alright with you, because my, my hand is starting to hurt and I should go have some more painkillers and stuff, so I'm gonna keep going with this game for another 15 minutes. And then, as we've already done one through, run through of this, we can come back. If we want to do more of this, we can come back. There's enough content to keep us going forever. And, yo, this game is a lot of fun. So, bloody hell, I'm going to get here. Oh, I'm out of power. I am so stuffed. Oh, feck off! No! Leave me alone! Leave me alone! Nope, 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 So the XDX man says, got the game last weekend. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to uh, at bat it before I catch up with the rest of the crew. Well, that's all cool. We can start helping peeps out. Like, if if Dan is at the same point he was on the PS4, he's way ahead of me. Because he had, like, Bagel Goose Charge Axe and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, Aaron, did you manage to get your rig up and ready to go for Monster? Fuck! Jesus Christ! Oh, so as you can see, lovely, lovely guests, these little guys are invisible. You can see that you can see the the slightest hint of them if you're paying close attention. Oh, this fucking game. I am going to be all up in this when this comes out. And like Dan and Peeps, we're not going to be able to get to it again in this stream. But on the next level, there is a huge, like, monstrous sky hand that stalks you across the map. And the thing's the size we're building. It's massive and weird and brilliant.
So, sorry, I was completely lost in thought there. I do apologise. I do apologise, one and all. Oh, I'm beta was saying, I like how Jim lied about the invisible guys. <laughs> and uh, Aaron asking me, do you need your brown pants? I am already wearing the brown pants. And if they weren't the brown pants before, they might be the brown pants now. I'll try the. You know what? I'm just going to leave that whole compound. Let's try the other one. Let's try the other one. But it's not like I can do anything. I'm out of power. So, okay, you lovely, lovely folks. That's what we're going to do. Um, I'm going to play this for another 10 minutes or so. And then um, I'll take a quick break. Get some painkillers. Uh, oh. What am I doing? What am I doing? All right, maybe now would be a good point. Maybe now would be a good point. A legend says, how's your hand? It's all right. I'm actually, I'm finding mouse and keyboard games are way harder to play than I am um, controller games. Uh, and a bit more ice to it might not be the worst thing. Let me see if I can get a good view to look out upon this deskless wasteland for you all. That's pretty good. That might be a bit better. Oh, that's a cracking view. Have ourselves a drink at the end of the world. Okie dokie. So, you lovely, lovely folks. I'm going to go get some painkillers. I'm going to just quickly stuff something into my face. Um, and then let's rotate on to um, some Monster Hunter. I'll see if I can do it. If I can't do Monster Hunter, then eh, what's the worst that can happen? I'll ice my hand, I'll, I'll ping Hero to the people, Dan Jones, see if he's up for jumping on voice comms, and we'll go from there, yo. We'll go from there. Uh, Alleged said, check Twitter, I sent you a link to some painkillers. I'm actually not in pain, that's the thing. It's, well, I mean a little bit, but it's, yeah, it's reduced mobility. It's kind of like, that's as much as I can lift my pinky finger from there, and it's still pretty swollen, so, you know, I'm not trying to do the dog like, bah, 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 bah. Uh, as compared to my other noodly skinny hand. I'm getting dexterous with my left, I'll tell you that much. Um, so that's what we're going to do. If you would like to grab yourself a cup of tea, if you'd like to grab yourself a snack, now is the time to do it. Um, I do want to say... Oh, sorry. I just realised that. Paused. Uh, I do want to say a massive, massive thank you again to Jim, the team from Big Robot, for putting this up. Actually, before we uh, go to break, this is the link to... Uh, the light keeps us safe on Steam. If you would be so kind as to throw that on your wish list or what have you, that'll be a massive help to Jim and the team. The Steam algorithm is very picky about these kind of things, so yeah. So there we go. Right. Um, I don't think I have anything else to add. I'm just going to go get painkillers, eat something real fast, and then let's hunt some monsters together. I'd really like that, everybody. So yeah, we'll do some multiplayer together. Eat monsters, wear pants, hang out. Do regular human people things. Pants monsters, if you will. Wait, no, that's a very different game. Ah, feck, feck.